our first Thunderstock Heat Race of the evening. West Side Performance Plus, the sponsor of our, what, our Thunderstock division, and we will run down our driver entry list here for Heat Race number one, starting at tail. We have the 75, that is Ryan Berry. The 93F of Calvin Fox. 49, 49 is Dave Bailey. 65 of Scott Dunn. Starting at row number three, the 92 of Paige Lanou. Outside of her, we have the 19, that is Kyle Wirt. Row number two, we have the 28 car of Jim Lantman. Outside of him in the 427, that is Trevor Jones. And starting on the front row for our first heat race of the evening, we have last week's feature winner, the 43, Gerald Barton. And starting on the pole for heat race number one, that is 96 of Steve Shaw. Driver's going to bunch him up, get him a little closer together. They will come out of turn number four. And for the first time tonight, we will fire it up with a green flag in hand. Well, racing action underway. Gerald Martin jumps out to a slight lead as they come out down the back stretch into uh, three and four. Lots of dust flying there. Track conditions will certainly dust off as the night goes on here. So far, so good all the way back through the field. Jim Lampman in the 28. Looks down the back stretch on the rear bumper of Steve Shaw. Paige Lanou sits in fourth. Bailey in fifth in that 49 card. Bailey with a feature win here as well from earlier on this season. A few of these drivers have made the trip down. As you mentioned, uh, Merrittville Speedway not running tonight with their Thunderstocks. A little bit of contact there. A little further back between the 93 and the 65. Kelvin Fox and Scott Dunn. Scott Dunn in the 65. He brings it around in the bottom of turn number two, and that's going to bring out our first caution of the evening. Got it fired up, pointed the right direction. So he will race that thing around and join the tail of the field. So far out front, though, Gerald Martin, as we mentioned, uh, coming off a feature win last week in that 43 car. Had a great run. Uh, was talking to Gerald, he's excited to be back behind the wheel of a Thunderstock, having some fun. Steve Shaw behind him in the 96. Uh, a couple of feature wins so far in the 96 car, so uh, definitely a threat every night with Steve Shaw in the 96. Looks like everybody lined up. We will get them back to green one more time around the speedway. Martin Shaw and Lantman. As I mentioned, the 19 Kyle of Kyle, 19 car of Kyle Wirt. He was our feature winner just a couple weeks ago when the sprints were in town. So he will be a car to keep an eye on once we come to feature time tonight. Definitely fast. Still lots of good cars ahead of him as well in our first heat race of the night. Back to green we go. Down into turn number three, and Martin brings it around, gets that thing a little squirrely, but keeps it rolling. So we won't get bring out the caution. Shaw just narrowly avoiding getting into the side of Martin, so things could have been a lot worse there, but so far so good. She, Steve Shaw in the 96 now out front. Lantman and Bailey. Bailey will uh, try and track down the race leader as he looks to the inside of the 26 car, 28 car. Again, Bailey down out of three, looking to the inside. Lantman just a little better off of that corner as they head back down with just a few laps remaining here in heat race number one. Shaw with six cars on second and third now as they 
Headed to one and two. Bailey now to the inside of Lampman. See if he can make it stick. Coming out of two down the back stretch. They go door to door now into turn number three. Hard racing early on here this evening. Caution will come out again. Caution out on the speedway. We've got one around down in turn number two. Looks like the 427 of Trevor Jones has brought it to a stop just on the inside of turn number two. Got it running again, so he will join the tail of the field. I also see a right rear flat on Gerald Martin's 43 car, so he's going to have some issues continuing on there. He's been sliding back, and I'm sure that's the reason. Right rear flat on the 43 car. got the word he's going to pull that thing to the infield and uh, we're just down inside a couple laps to go here in our first heat race so Shaw, Lampman and Bailey, Paige Lanou and Kyle Wirt are your top five It will definitely be interesting to see how these drivers adjust. There's still lots of racing to go between now and their feature tonight, and it's going to be a 40-lap feature, so that's a long time to go for one of these cars. They will have to get the tires just right, get the fuel just right, because that's a long, long run for these guys as we uh, get ready to roll back to green. Steve Shaw going to bring them out of turn number four. Down the back stretch, Bailey to the outside this time. Gets a good run down into three slides up just a little bit, coming out of four with just two laps left to go. Door to door, Bailey and Lantman for second. One more time around for race leader Shaw. Bailey now in that second position, looks to try and track down Shaw, but with just uh, half a track left to go, not sure he's got enough time left to get that done. I'm sure he will scoot in, settle for second here in our first heat race. Shaw, Bailey, Lantman, Lanou, and Wirt are your top five for heat race number one. these guys will go back and do some wrenching as we said uh, obviously track going to change a little bit not too heavy right now so not a lot to change but definitely you uh, have to consider moisture that could come back out I know that sounds silly to some people but as the sun goes down we will start to see some moisture come back up out of the ground here and make things just a little bit different as heat race number two now makes its way out onto the racetrack we'll run down this list here from the tail of the field we have the 98 car of Andrew Mayu, the 74 is Stan Cook, the 47B is Mitchell Brusso, the 30 car, that is Laura Othier, 5G is Gord Grant, 76 is Jeff Drummond, 327, that is your current points leader, Sean Jones, outside of him, the 27 of John Hodges, and on the front row for heat race number two, we have the 21 of Spencer Smolders, and the 45 of Barry Watson. Another 10 cars ready to do battle. So of the 30 cars in attendance here tonight, only 20, only 20 of these drivers will get to start tonight's feature event. A lot of that will come from your finishes here in the heat race. We will see how they get things drawn out, but to only 20 of our 30 cars will start tonight's 40 lap feature we get ready to go with heat race number two. Watson and Smolders bringing them down to green.
down the back stretch now into three and four. Smolder slides up just a little bit there from the point. Five wide back behind them there as they come door to door across the stripe. Quite a big pack of cars there from the fourth position back. Lots of action going on there out front though. Smolders, Watson. Smolders again pushing hard slides up Watson. We have Sean Jones also looking to get inside those two, see if he can make his way to the front. A little further back, all kinds of action going on. Brusso Drummond battling for that fourth position. Brusso comes around just a little bit in the 47B, see if he can keep that thing pointed. Doesn't gather up anybody, keeps it rolling, so no caution, no caution will come out. Russo getting just a little bit loose there in three, so he's out at the tail. Gonna have his work cut out for him. Up front though, Jones right to the rear bumper of the 45 of Watson. Another car around in turn number three. This time it's a 30 of Laura Othier. She brings it around, but she will get it pointed in the right direction. We will keep things green as things start to heat up out front. Smolders in the 21 again, slides way up, but just has a, a good momentum coming off the corner. This time though, Watson right on the inside of him as they head down door to door into one and two. Smolders definitely gonna have to tighten that thing up before the feature tonight. Gets great runs off the corner, but just not smooth through the corners as he pushes hard there again in three and four. Good three car battle up front. Car getting into the wall a little further back, the 76. Jeff Drummond gets hard up into the outside wall. He's slow down the front stretch. That's gonna bring out a caution. We also have Smolders around in turn number one. So a good start to the night for Smolders, not being here before, but uh, not sure if that thing just got turned around or got a little loose on him. Wasn't sure what happened in one and two. I was watching the 76 car as he got up into the wall there. But there we see the 21 car parked down. Got it fired up. After talking to Smolders earlier on, hasn't been here yet this season. So not a way, bad way to start the night. Gonna have some tuning to do on that one before tonight's feature. So that puts Barry Watson in the in the 45, excuse me, 45 to the front. Heck of a run by the 98 car. Andrew Mayo in the 98 started tail on this heat race, and he is now sitting in that third position. So. A, a newbie in the class, a rookie here, getting things rolling in the 98, but having a good, good run here so far in his heat race tonight. Got some pretty stout competition behind him in the 5G of Gord Grant, but uh, Mayu making his way through traffic early on, sits in that third position. Watson and Jones, one and two. Sean Jones with a, a couple feature wins, as we mentioned, so far this season, so that has been a good car for them in the 327. Again, want to thank everybody for making the trip out tonight. Uh, we've had a pretty good summer so far here. Mother Nature's cooperated a, a little bit, had a couple rain outs, but uh, glad to see everybody packing the stands again tonight. Just a reminder, no smoking in the grandstands, no smoking in the grandstands. We have designated areas behind, so make sure if you need to partake, please head on down behind the grandstands. One more time around here for heat race number two.
Watson, Jones, and Mayu. One, two, three. We'll bring them one more time out of turn four as we go back to green. Lord Grant quick to the outside, down the back stretch on the outside of Mayu. Jones to the outside of Watson. So lots of battles going on here. And we've got one lap left to go here in our second heat race. Jones now to the outside, down through one and two. Looks like he could take that spot away, but Watson with a great run off the bottom of two. So they will come door to door down the back stretch. Jones again slides up just a little bit. Believe that will open up the door for Watson on the 45. Watson will be the winner. So Barry Watson in the 45 picks up heat race win number two. Sean Jones comes home in second. Some front end damage there on the 47 of Mitchell Brusso. They will have some cosmetic work to do. I'm sure a little bit of setup work to do on that car as well before the feature tonight. Right, heat race number three now on the racetrack. We'll run down this Marcel Gaudet in the G72. Uh, outside of him on the list was uh, Brad Othier in the 1A, but I don't see him making the call. Todd Shaw in the 96T. The 42 is Matt Wilson. 93 is Nathaniel Greenaway. 28D is Donnie Lantman. Row number two, we have the 36 car tonight driven by Alan Riom. The 444, Brian Brady. And on the front row for heat race number three, the four car of John Lynch. And on the pole for heat race number three is the 53 of Loden Sodic. Shadik. I apologize, I'm going to mess up that name until I figure out how to pronounce it. But Logan, Logan in the 53 car. Just finally getting clarification. Top five, top five from each of these three heat races will transfer into tonight's feature. We will have a B main for the Thunderstocks for the remaining drivers and the top five from the B main will transfer into tonight's feature. And then we will determine the starting grid for tonight's 40 lap Thunderstock feature as we bring them on down for heat race number three. Things heating up as we've got uh, a bunch of cars going crazy here in heat race number three. A big pack behind race leader. Out front, the 53 of Logan Schwittick. Logan with a, about a half track now ahead of Todd Shaw, the 96T, but everybody's still tight behind him. John Lynch in the four car, 
side by side they go in the 28 and the 90 sorry the 36 car so Lantman in the 28 D Alan Rio in the 36 still a big group of cars back there obviously uh, now battling for that fifth position that's going to be the hot spot to get to if you finish inside that top five you will transfer into the feature event tonight so currently John Lynch in the four car sits in fifth and the 42 of Matt Wilson just on the outside so Wilson is the guy to follow to see if he can make it into the feature or if he'll have to get there by means of the B main tonight as we say that Lynch in the four car brings it around in turn number three and four keeps it fired up keeps it rolling so we're not going to get a caution things rolling along for heat race number three Schwedek now with one lap to go leading this heat race behind him Todd Shaw finished runs in second Al Rio in third Got another car around and the caution going to come out now. We've got, I believe that's the 93 of Nathaniel Greenaway. The 93, he comes to a stop down in turn number three, right down there on the bottom of the track. So a little bit of smoke out of there as he came down to the infield. So safety crew quick on the scene to check, uh, check things out there. As always, got to give a big shout out to our safety crew. Last week, they were on their toes. We, we had one catch on fire. We had all kinds of action last week. So safety crew was busy, busy, busy last week. We've got some of the best in the business down there on the infield each week getting things done. Logan Schwedek, though, is your current race leader. Another guy there that's been running strong as of late, Todd Shaw in the 96T. He's been doing quite well, a runner-up in last week's feature, having a great run with uh, Gerald Martin. So lots of things progressing there for Todd Shaw in the 96. Behind him, Alan Rio uh, doing double duty with Eugene Hookshire. Eugene, a veteran here at the Speedway, been behind the wheel of a number of things, uh, doing double duty with Alan in the 36. Lantman in the 28D, another one of the drivers making the trip down. I'm not sure the connection, but Jim Lantman and Donnie Lantman, I have to assume somehow related as we get the hook on the back of the 93T of Nathaniel Greenaway. So once again, top five from each of these heat races will transfer on. The other 15 cars will go to the B main. And of that, the top five of the B main will transfer into the A, giving them a chance for the $500 payout tonight here in our Thunderstock division. $500 to the winner of the 40 lap feature. John Lynch in the four having a good run until he got a little squirrely down there in three and four. So he now sits at the tail. Matt Wilson also having a decent run, but he's pushed back just a little bit. Still just on the outside of the top five, Marcel Gaudet, though, in the 72 car. Sorry, yeah, the G72. He sits in that fifth position, so he is on the bubble here to see if he can hold on. Keep that 72 car into tonight's feature. I know the folks at home won't know what I'm talking about, but a good look on the screen there. We've got all the cameras set up here. Nick and the gang doing a great job. Cameras pointing down one and two, the flag stand. 
and Nick hanging out all night long on top of the tower, giving us the great view from up there. So thanks, Nick. And the, the lovely lady behind the control panel doing a great job all season long. Unfortunately, we don't have our live stream tonight. Uh, we did post that on our Facebook page. No live stream tonight. We've had, uh, unfortunately, a number of technical issues on the live stream. So I believe we're looking into some changes there. But if you want to catch this action again, make sure you tune in on our YouTube channel Monday night at 7 o'clock for the broadcast, uh, the live watch party. You can check out this action again on our YouTube channel if you miss anything. And, but before we get to that, we're going to get back to racing one more time. Logan Schwittick, Schwittick brings him back to green one more time around. Checkers are out for the 53. Schwedick will take the win, followed by Todd Shaw, Alan Riom, and Lantman in the 28D. So that's going to do it for heat race number three. Schwedick in the 53, picking up the win. So 15 cars so far have punched their ticket into tonight's feature event. Uh, the rest will go to the B main, which we will run just before intermission. So. That will be a 12 lap B main event for those drivers. Time to change things up just a little bit here as we roll into our first of three late model features here tonight. A big group of cars coming out for the Andre Lanou and for auto sales late models. A big shout out to Andre Lanou and all the gang down there in Tilbury for sponsoring our late model division this year. Andre Lanou and on for Amp for Auto Sales. Heat race number one, we see the 34 of Jim Jones. Outside of him is a 60 of Dale Glassford. Row number two is the 38D of Doris Lajeunesse. Outside of him is the double zero of Mike Dale. And on the front row for heat race number one, the 05 of Mike Lewis. And on the pole, we have the 11B of Brad Bloomfield. So six cars ready to go here for heat race number one. Again, eight laps the distance for all of our heat races here tonight. So eight laps to go, six cars ready to go. Bloomfield and Lewis. Lewis with a great run last week. Had a little bit of contact with the 21, so we that sent him to the tail. Had his work cut out for him, so been looking good for the 05 of Mike Lewis. Bloomfield back as well as we get ready to go for heat race number one. Well, caution going to come out as the 60 car of Dale Glassford comes around in turn number three. He got stuck down on the bottom there for just a minute, so that's going to bring out a caution. Glassford was having a decent run, running the bottom there just a little bit, trying to make his way through traffic, but gets that squirrely. He's been off and on a couple weeks here, hasn't had too much seat time on the new track. Out front, though, the Mike Lewis machine. Fat Guy Racing 05 is your point leader here in the heat race number one. Bloomfield behind him. Lajeunesse in the 38 car. One more time around here for heat race number one.
Mike Lewis one more time. Going to bring him down through three and four. Back to green we go here. Couple laps left to go here for race leader Lewis Bloomfield Lajeunesse and Jimmy Jones, the bad fast grandpa, sits in that fourth position. Most drivers choosing right down through the middle of the track so far. We'll have to see if that changes as the night goes on as Lajeunesse gets a little squirrely there coming out of four. Two more times around the speedway for Lewis. Not much changing behind him. Glassford a bit on the outside there. Gets one spot taken away from Mike Dale. He starts to move his way up through the field, trying to gain some ground. Running the high line there through one and two. Last time around for Lewis, checkered flag in hand. Looks like it will be the fat guy racing machine of Michael Lewis picking up the heat win, followed by Brad Bloomfield in the 11. And Doris Lajeunesse in the 38, rounding out the top three. Close call there as uh, Mike Lewis was just about to make his way off the track and Bloomfield coming up on the high side there, so that could have been a lot worse. Something I've been noticing here as uh, things have gone on. Last week, drivers were fighting uh, quite a bump down there in turn, but right between three and four, kind of the center of the corner, the center of the track uh, was developing a bit of a rut there early on. And uh, so far so good though, as uh, the track seems to be holding up pretty good down there in three and four. I know that was uh, a bit of an issue that the uh, re car thought they may have had a problem hitting that bump a couple times as he had a bent shock in the rear of that car. So that uh, got him a little slowed up as we roll on here with heat race number two. Heat race number two, we will see the 43 car of Cody Vandewinkle. Uh, car I'm not seeing making the call as of yet. We were supposed to have the 66 of Tyler Lozon. Tyler Lozon with a new hot rod, but I don't see him out here making the call for heat race number two. Jim Dale Jr. in the 00D car. And on the front row, we have the RH21 of Greg Haskell and the 22S of Brian Spielman. I know I've talked about it a couple times throughout the season here, but Spielman in the 22 S car, when I talked to him before the season even started, he said, this one's just going to be for fun. I'm not really going to, you know, he was more focused on the modified. He's had good luck there, but Spielman currently sits in second in points right now. Not too far off the pace of the uh, Rio Othier machine. So good to see the 22 S having some good runs out here in the late model, but he's got his hands full with Haskell in the 21 outside of him for heat race number two.
Now so far Haskell in the 21 with a good run out front there. Spielman second. Jim Dale Jr. and Cody Van de Winkle. Cody Van de Winkle having a good season so far as well. Behind the wheel of a 43 car. Way this time by for Greg Haskell. Car's pretty spread out, not much doing here unless somebody's going to bobble pretty bad. Haskell and Spielman, 1-2. Dale and Vandewinkle, 3 and 4. White flag this time by. Checkers in the air for Greg Haskell. He will pick up heat race win number two. Spielman, Dale, and Vandewinkle. Two, three, and four. So as we mentioned, mentioned Spielman in second in points. Currently, though, it is the 1A machine. Mostly this season driven by Andrew Riom with a couple of feature wins. So he has been fast. Riom behind the wheel tonight as well of the 1A machine. So we see these guys getting out there. The 29 car, that is Ryan Bonner. As you mentioned, that is the chassis from the 48 late model. So Ryan Bonner in the 29. CJ Field in the four car. Dwayne Malott in the 20. On the front row, Jordan Van Hall in the 06, and outside of him is the 1A car of Andrew Riom. Last week it was the Field and Riom show here as they went down to the line. Andrew had a bent rear shock in the car, so that thing went away on him given the opportunity for CJ, but CJ driving the wheels off of that thing to get to him as well. So a great run by both of those drivers. It was the four of CJ picking up the feature win last week. Only eight laps the distance this time for both of those drivers as we have green flag in hand ready to go this time out of three and four. Van Hall and Riom cutting them loose for heat race number three. The 20 of Malat comes around. A 20 of Malat, he comes around. That will bring out a caution. Bonner in the 29 car spinning to avoid. Brings, brings that thing to a woe. Make sure you grab those 50-50 tickets. A junior fan club tonight going to gain from all of that. So grab up those 50-50 tickets. We'll be making that draw coming up at intermission. As the 20 and the 29 both get fired up and headed in the right direction here. So Malat and the 20 getting a little loose there. Uh, out front though, Rio with a good jump right from the get-go sitting at the point. CJ Field in that four car behind him. Jordan Van Hall in the 06 with a good run so far this season, getting things uh, 
sorted out. A learning process for him this year in the 06 as he's made his way up to the late model division. So not easy once you get up into the big leagues here. But uh, Jordan doing pretty well in that 06 car. Currently running in that third position. Green flag in hand one more time. Rio will lead them out of number four. And we will go back to green one more time. out front it's starting to look like last week's feature the four and the one doing battle cj running close to the bottom Riom letting it fly on the high side we'll have to see how this shakes out for these two come feature time tonight Right down to the wire that time by a heck of a show going on out front here. Two different lines run and two crazy drivers doing battle. This time looks like Andrew going to try the bottom just a little bit. See if he can hold off CJ. That slows him up just a little bit. Down into two laps to go here in heat race number three. CJ consistently running well down there on the bottom. Andrew just a bit on the high side. Again, Drew down to the bottom, trying to take that line away. White flag out one more time around for Riom. Good battle for that third position between Bonner and Malott. One more time around for both of those drivers as well. Van Hall slides back to fifth, but this time by with checkers out down to the wire they come. It will be Riom picking up the heat race win, followed by CJ Field. Ryan Bonner, Dwayne Malott, and Jordan Van Hall rounding out the top five here for our late model division. Again, big thanks to Andrew, Andre Lanou and for Auto Sales for sponsoring our late model division this year. Definitely going to be fun to watch these drivers again come feature time. We will keep rolling along here as the sun sets behind us on a beautiful Saturday night here at Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. Time to get a look at our modified division. Shingles Gourmet Meats, the title sponsor here, and they have been for many years. Big thanks to John and the gang in Chatham for sponsoring our modified division. Heat race number one, we will see the 11 car of Phil Villaranda. That is Tate O'Leary, the 43 car of Brad McLeod. Row number two, we have the 6M of Justin Mills and the 86 of Drew Smith. And on the front row, we have the 14 car of Mario Toniolo and the 98P of Patrick Lajeunesse. Seven cars ready to go, eight laps the distance. One more time in our heat race. Lajeunesse Toniolo brings him down through three and four, ready to fire it up one more time. Down into one and two as cars getting squirrely. McLeod just a little sideways gathers up Villaranda, but they keep it pointed in the right direction. Everything moving along. Out front though, lap number one will go to Toniolo in the 14 car. Drew Smith now making his way up to the second position, but Lajeunesse not going to give that up easy. 
Lajeunesse now falls back just a bit to third. Smith now looks to the inside of Tony Olo. This time by Tony Olo will take that lap, but it looks like Smith is going to give him a run again down on the inside of two. A battle out of turn number two down the back stretch, side by side into three. Smith on the bottom. Tony Olo slides up just a little bit, tries to get that momentum, but it will be Smith this time. Cars starting to spread out just a little bit here. Track conditions drying out just a little bit. Up front, Smith leads, lead, Smith leads these guys around. Tony Olo, Lajeunesse, and Mills. A little further back there to Brad McLeod, Villaranda, and O'Leary rounding out the field here. Looks like he's got some front end damage as he pulls that car down to the infield. Looked like some front end issues, but O'Leary now to the infield as we continue on here for heat race number one. Down to two laps to go here for Smith in the 86. Smith now starting to stretch it out as he runs the bottom there through three and four. White flag out this time by for race leader. Tony Olo now in second. Lajones and Mills. The only battling going on right now seems to be at the back there between Villaranda and McLeod, but out front it will be the 86 of Drew Smith taking the win for heat race number one. Followed by Tony Olo, Lajeunesse, and Mills. That's going to do it for heat race number one in our modified division. The second heat race getting ready to roll out onto the track. Six cars ready to go for heat race number two. Starting at tail, we have the 09D of Joel Dick. Outside of him, it's the 07 of Curtis King. 22S is Brian Spielman doing double duty here tonight. The 33, that is Chris Fiddler. Chris Fiddler in the 33. And on the front row for heat race number two, we have the 5X of Tim Richardson. And outside of him, it's the 00D of Jim Dale Jr. Again, eight laps the distance here for our second modified heat race. No B main or anything for these guys here tonight as they will all get into tonight's feature event. Race fans, if you're looking for safety glasses or earplugs, safety glasses or earplugs, those are available down in the souvenir booth as well. Grab those up, protect those ears, protect those eyes as we get back to race in heat race number two. Well, Richardson out front. Nice to see the double zero back as he has had a few weeks off with some motor issues. So getting things sorted out one more time for Jim Dale and the double zero. Outside of him is the 22 of Spielman as he tries to take that second position away. Richardson at the point in the 5X. Richardson slides up at the point all the way to the wall, but manages to keep it pointed in the right direction.
Spielman now looks to the inside of him. Down the back stretch they go. Spielman trying to take the point away here as they head down into three and four. Spielman on the bottom. Richardson running the top. Richardson with some good momentum off of the corner. I believe Richardson going to take that lap, but they go door to door down into one and two. And around comes Spielman and just gathers up Dick just a little bit. Looks like some issues there as uh, Joel Dick not too happy behind the wheel as he just gets it gathered up a little bit by Spielman in the 22S. Joel going to make that right-hand turn, unfortunately, back to the pits for the 09D. No place for him to go as Spielman got just a bit too much going down into one and two. Brings it around sideways and... As we mentioned, it's been about, I believe, three weeks. Three weeks for sure, maybe more for Jim Dale Jr. in the double zero. He's been out with motor issues. They finally got that one put back together. So he is back rolling behind the wheel of the double zero. Out front, though, Tim Richardson in the 5X, still leading these guys around. To green we go. Well, Richardson with a good jump in the five backs, leading him around still. Jimmy Dale sits in second. Spielman has already made his way back up to that third position around Fiddler and King. So trying to get things headed in the right direction for Spielman. Two laps left to go in heat race number two. Richardson still at the point. White flag out one more time around this time for Richardson in the 5X. Not much change behind him. The Dale still sits in second. Spielman runs in third. One more time around the track for all of these drivers before we end heat race number two. Checkers in the air for the 5X of Tim Richardson. Richardson with a good run there from the front row in the 5X car. Currently Drew Smith in the 86 car. He is your points leader in our modified division. Joel Dick, Brian Spielman, Justin Mills, and Mario Toniolo rounding out the top five. Some bad luck for Joel Dick. We'll have to see what kind of work he's got to do before he can bring that 09D back out here for the feature. nowhere for him to go that time by but hey he'll get this thing sorted out they'll be back here as we get ready to continue on here in our racing program we're going to bring out the great lakes gymnastics mini mods now out onto the racetrack looks like we're going to have three features three feet or three heat races three heat races for our mini mod division Heat race number one, we see the 87 of Kyle Gill, seven of Larry Hart, 91 of Austin Pickering, 78 Bree, that's 78 B is Brad Bowden, 52 of Austin Pickering, the 16 of Evan Bonner. On the front row, we have the 50, sorry, the 25 of Jason Turkington, and we're supposed to have the 62 of Harley Hornick, but she has made her way to the infield with some technical issues there, so that's going to bump the 52 of Austin Turkington up onto the front row.
So not sure what happened there with Harley, but some technical issues right off the bat for her and she makes her way to the infield. As we see the 25 car, for the 52 and the 25. White flag this time by for the 16. Evan Bonner leading this one around. One more time for him in the 16 car. Followed by the 87 of Kyle Gill. Unfortunately, things spread out. A lot of cars getting all over the place and some issues early on in heat race number one. So kind of weird the way this one finishes, but it's Bonner and Kyle Gill and the seven of Larry Hart, followed by the 78 car of Bowden. So the issues early on for both the 52 and the 25, they were sent off before the race even started. They didn't have their neck guard on, which is a rule, so they were sent to the pits. So not having a neck guard sent both of the Turkington cars to the pits and Austin Pickering after having a good run unfortunately had to make his way to the infield as his window neck came down. So some safety issues there. So Pickering in the 91 to the infield with his window net down. So I'm sure we'll see him back out. Not any technical issues as long as that's not broken broken and they can't get that put back together. And Hadley Hornick now getting pushed off, so hopefully those guys can get things sorted out. She has not had some good luck this season at all, and that 62 car just can't seem to find the bugs to get worked out in that 62. So 
Heat race number two now rolling out onto the racetrack. Heat race number two, we see the 28K of Caleb O'Leary. 23D is Joel Desjardins. 31 of Marshall Herregers. 46 is Wild West Bertozzi. The E46, that is Dustin Burke. Dustin Burke in the E46. And on the front row, we have the 8M of Sean McNally and the 55 of Dave Bacon. So the 31 with a different body on it this week. Not sure if that's the old chassis completely or if they just put the new body on it. Uh, the 31 involved last week with some hard contact on the outside wall. Bit of contact between him and the N64 car. Both of those guys battling hard for the lead and some contact sent the 31 into the wall. So not sure if they had major car issues, but it uh, looks like he's going to get ready to go back here for the 31 car. Bacon and McNally are ready to go here for heat race number two. Out of turn four, we go green flag action. Well, McNally out the front here as we roll along in heat race number two, followed by West Bertozzi in the 46 and Marshall Herregers in the 31. Working his way up through traffic now into that third position. I do apologize, I was wrong on the different body. Same one as last week, just uh, had to get the brake pedal fixed. The brake pedal broke off on that car last week, so got that sorted out, wheeling this thing back, trying to get his way to the front here of the heat race. Wes Bertozzi in the 46 is your current points leader with just a small margin over the 31 of Marshall Herregers. Those two doing battle for that second position. McNally out front though with a good run so far in the 8M. Marshall now to the outside there of the 46 car. Good battle door to door as they come out of turn number two. Marshall takes just a bit of a run down the high side. Gonna try and take that position away as he now in the second position. White flag this time for McNally. Down the back stretch they go one more time. Into three and four, checker flag in the air. McNally in the eight and picking up the heat race win followed by Herregers. Bertozzi in third, O'Leary in fourth, and Burke in the E46 rounding out the top five. So a good run there from McNally, starting on the pole, but having a great run keeping that thing out front. Marshall Herregers in the 31, starting from the third row, works his way up through traffic, finishes second. Bertozzi there in third, starting on the outside of the second row. So that's gonna do it for heat race number two. One more to go here in our mini mod division. Race number three now out on the track run down through the field here in the 18P. That is Mark Fallon. Row number three, the 21 of Rick Ballison. 
Outside of him, there's a 14 of J.D. Hack. Row number two, we see the N64 of Dylan Bonner. Outside of him, the 56 of Gerald Underwood. And on the front row here for heat race number three, on the outside, we have the 29J of Dave Johnson. And the 06 of Jessica Van Hall. Jessica ready to go on the front row. Had a nice chat with both Jessica and Paige Lanou last week. A couple of the ladies drivers here at Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. Both of those ladies having some fun this season so far. Both drivers on the front row will have their hands full with the N64 behind him. He's been quick so far this season. Underwood as well in the 56 has had a pretty good run of it so far this season as well. Green flag out as we get rolling for heat race number three. a great start there for Jessica as she slides back through the field just a little bit but she'll keep things going. Roll along here Johnson out to the point in the 29J. On the opposite side Fallon in the 18P with a good run starting tail. He's already battling up there for that second position. Takes that away with the N64 inside of him so a great run by Mark. Down there now down to three and four. Both of those guys looking to put the moves on Johnson here. Foul to the outside with a great run there. Got that thing hooked up in Rocket tonight. Now goes to the point of heat race number three. Down the back stretch they go. Allen now have to hold off the efforts of Bonner in the N64 as they head down through three and four, getting about halfway now through our heat race. Bonner to the inside of the 18P. He will take that spot away. Good battle, a little further back. Ballison inside, Underwood down through three and four. Good run from the 21 car so far as he makes his way towards the front of the track. Now gonna do battle with Johnson in that third position. Johnson slides up just a little bit. Ballison now to the inside, trying to take that third spot away. Good run down the back stretch. They go door to door. Coming up on two laps this time by for race leader Bonner. Fallon still runs in that second position. Ballison now making his way into the third spot. One more time around for race leader Bonner. Down the back stretch he goes a long way back to second place Fallon and third place Ballison and that's gonna do it. The N64 of Dylan Bonner will pick up heat race win number three. Again, great run by Fallon in the 18P, starting tail, worked his way up through the field, coming home in second, and Ballison also working his way through traffic. He will come home in that third position. And just like that, we are now through our mini mods. Three heat races done and in the books for those drivers, and they will go back and start wrenching before their feature event tonight. And we're going to continue right on through with our heat race programs here tonight. First heat race for our mini stock division. We see the 54 of Chris French, 77 of Jake Blake, the 747 of Ryan Boilo, or Boil U. Last week, if you saw that car, it was literally on fire sitting down there in turn number two. So those guys got that thing 
straightened out. They, they're, they're demo derby guys too, so they've had some work on that. But the 747, glad to see him back out, rising from the fire. The Phoenix rising, as he mentioned in his Facebook post. Glad to see them back out. And the J2 of James Kelly. Three of four cars, I guess. Three of four. Well, out front of heat race number one, Chris French in the 54 car running along. Bull you in the 747 trying to gain some ground to pick up that lead, but he's going to get in the second position or continue in the second position. James Kelly slides back, uh, spacing out just a little bit to that third position. This driver start to spread out just a little bit. Yeah, if you weren't here last week, make sure you check back on our YouTube video. Quite an interesting and scary scene as uh, the 747 came to a stop down at turn number two. Dustin, our corner worker, went over to check on him, and then the car burst into flames. It wasn't a crazy bad fire, but fire nonetheless. So good work by our safety crew getting over there and uh, getting pull you out of the car. Everybody was safe, everybody was good, so uh, a, a test to how great our track crew is here at Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. One more time around the speedway for race leader French. is going to do it for heat race number one in our mini stock division. French in the 54 car. Chris French picking up the win. Bull you in the 747. And the J2 of James Kelly. Closing it out in heat race number one. Just one more heat race to go here before we get to our Thunderstock B main. Four more cars now making their way out onto the racetrack. The 92 of Ryan Houston. Ryan uh, 
mentioned after I spoke with him earlier on in our junior fan party, his car was actually painted by his nine-year-old son, I believe it was. Uh, let me check on that. But uh, pretty cool, an interesting paint scheme. A lot of splatter, a cool-looking design there on the 92 H of Ryan Houston. The 2M of Mark McDonald inside of him. The 50 car, that is Ken Frazier, and the 26 of Matt Newell. Four more cars ready to do battle here for heat race number two. And one more time around we go. Well, just getting word from 5050, last call for 5050, last call. Make sure you head on down to the booth real quick, just beside the entrance of the racetrack. Grab those 5050 tickets. We'll be making that draw coming up at intermission. And thank you for supporting our junior fan club as we go green for heat race number two in our mini stock division.
Well, sorry for the break there in our fans. Just having a little break in the action, getting ready to go here. We will have our Thunderstock B Main coming out on the racetrack here in just a couple minutes. 15 cars will do 12 laps. The top five will transfer into the feature event tonight. 40 laps the distance for that feature, so definitely we're going to be an interesting one here for our Thunderstock feature tonight. Once we get those cars lined up, we will have a very brief intermission. So if you want to stretch your legs now, just before we get to intermission, go right ahead. Uh, again, I want to thank you for your patience with our fans down the stairs. The kids doing the best they can to keep things rolling. Just want to thank you for your patience and uh, all the kids doing the best they can downstairs, keeping things rolling for you as we get ready to go here for our Thunderstock B Main. Again, still lots of racing left this season, and uh, I don't like the looks of that circle coming up in the sky over there, that's for sure. You can't quite see it. I'm watching my screen that will have broadcast on YouTube, and uh, a view pointed out at Mr. Moon, who is slowly making his way to the sky. And generally when the moon comes up like that, I don't know if it's a full moon. I don't want to talk about a full moon on a race night. But if it is, that's never a good thing come feature time. But as you mentioned, lots of great racing action left to go all season long. We still have many nights to go all the way into early October. We will have some great racing action. We will end the season off early in October with the doubleheader weekend. So that's going to be a good one. Make sure you uh, check the website for those details. Lots of great stuff coming up there. That will be early October. We have a few more busy nights in the meantime. Well, 
Well, I just got handed the lineup here for our Thunderstock B main. So a few of these drivers are going to have their work cut out for them if they want to get into tonight's feature event. As we mentioned, the top five will transfer. Youngster starting on the front row, the 93F of Calvin Fox, only 14 years old, has made his way up through the racing divisions, racing carts and things like that. Now behind the wheel of Thunderstock. He's been doing pretty good, so he will be starting on the front row here. Well, we got this short break. We want to give a big shout out to all of our sponsors. We couldn't do it without you. All those banners you see down the back stretch there. Big thank you to all of those businesses helping out in one way or another to keep things rolling along here at Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. We've got a couple more. Jeff's Roofing over there, as well as the Gymnastics Club over in one and two, or sorry, three and four. Any racetrack you've ever been to, there's always lots of sponsors. There's always lots of things like that to help the program roll along. We couldn't do it without them. We want to thank everybody. And if you happen to be in the area or need those services, check these sponsors out. As I mentioned earlier, it was the 43 of Gerald Martin. He picked up his first feature win of the season last week in the Thunderstock class. Talked to him after the races. He was definitely pretty excited about that. He's, uh, he said he's having fun again, which is uh, uh, pretty important to some of these guys. I know a lot of you take it seriously, but it is still just for fun. So glad to see Gerald having some fun behind the wheel of the 43 Thunderstock. Again, if you want to catch tonight's racing action again, it will be rebroadcast on Monday night at 7 o'clock on our YouTube channel. If you haven't checked it out yet and you've got a minute throughout the week while you're busy at work or whatever it is you do at work, check out our YouTube channel, Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. You can also watch any of the previous week's events on there as well. So always fun to reminisce about those. Big thanks to Nick and the gang doing the work all week to keep that rolling for us. Unfortunately, the uh, live streaming side of things not doing well. We've tried a couple different internet companies out here, and we just haven't had any luck with the right speeds to keep that rolling on a good quality level that you fans deserve. So we'll make the decision this week, but I believe we will start having Monday Night Watch parties on our YouTube channel. So follow along on Facebook. We'll make that announcement coming up in just a day or two. You see cars starting to get ready to go there for our... Thunderstock B main. Something else I believe we're going to do that we haven't done so far this season. We're going to do some driver introductions tonight in our late model division. They are the first feature event coming up after intermission. So we're going to get a chance to run down the lineup and introduce those drivers. Make sure you give them a cheer or a boo or whatever you want to do to yell at them. I see a couple of drivers down there checking the track conditions. One of them looks like Brad Othier. I see his name on the list here in the 1A for the Thunderstock class. So not sure if Brad going to make the call here tonight for that Thunderstock race. Checking things out with uh, Charlie Field. Charlie Field and Brad Othier down there uh, checking things out. I've got the advantage of my TV screen here. I can check out what's going on, what's being videotaped. Also see the 70, or 27, I should say, 27 of John Hodges down there ready to go. So just a few more cars left to get in the chute, get them lined up. They do come out of the track, or onto the track down there in turn number four. Once we get them lined up, ready to go. Again, I want to give a, a quick shout out to Dave Craig's Towing. Dave Craig's Towing uh, bringing out another tow truck for us. I'm glad to have a little extra hook power out there. I want to thank them for bringing it out as well as the Hornet Garage. We always had him down on the infield in that other wrecker. So glad to have these folks helping out. Try and keep this program rolling along for us.
Just getting a peek on the TV screen here. A bunch of crews uh, taking a chance to stretch their legs just a little bit, get ready to go before we get back to racing action. As I mentioned, 15 cars getting ready to go here for that Thunderstock B main. As I mentioned, it is Sean Jones. Sean, the current points leader in our Thunderstock division. And I, I, I thought I recognized a face uh, coming up here, but the we'll call him the veteran voice of the Speedway here at Southern Ontario Motor Speedway, Jason Whittle. Jason Whittle, how the heck are you, man? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? I'm doing all right. It's been a while since I, I've had the opportunity to chit-chat with you up here in the booth. Uh, what have you been up to? Ah, just working away. Uh, kids racing go-karts. We're doing that a lot. We can't really cross the border right now, so we just focus on locally here running. And other than that, working a lot. Keep buying Tim Hortons, people. My pension appreciates it. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's never a, a tough thing for people to do, I believe. I've got to keep that Timmy's cup full. But uh, you're talking about the, the go-karts I see on your shirt there, Route 1. Route 1 Speedway. Those guys doing a lot of work down there at that go-kart track. Pretty neat to see things happening down there. Yeah, they, uh, they stepped up for us there last year when the border wasn't open and they um, built a track that started as a practice track and then one person said, well, I'd race there and another person said that and it's morphed into probably 70 cars on a Friday night, 70 carts will come out. So it's, uh, it's pretty good. It gives us a place to run. We'd much rather be down in the States running down south with everybody, but kid's 13 now so now he's looking at thunder stocks <laughs> and crate sprint so uh, maybe you'll see us out here in the next month or two with the thunder stock or maybe next year so i can build up some money there you go it's never it, it's never cheap to get back behind the wheel and uh while you got a minute you want to help call this race here with me i know it's been a while you think you still got what it takes i think we could do it i don't know any of the driver's names really <laughs> it's funny i work here and i still don't know the driver's names but oh. uh We've got the list. We've got one more time around here before we cut him loose. And uh, the only thing I do know for sure, Calvin Fox, the youngster, as well as John Hodges on the front row here. 15 cars, 12 laps the distance, and the top five will transfer into tonight's A main feature for the Thunderstock division. Something we, 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 have bef we have now, but we didn't have before. We get to watch the TV screen, the live YouTube, or what's going to be on YouTube the same time we're watching the race so lots of great action we see them lined up as they head down the back stretch with green flag in hand just about ready to cut these guys loose any favorites for this feature coming up here tonight well i have to say a uh, cheering for the 93f of calvin fox because i may sponsor him <laughs> he's been on a streak he's been doing well and he's starting out front here for the b main in our thunderstock event Hodges battles to the outside of Fox down the back stretch. Wilson looks to the inside going into three. Fox shuts the door. Wilson, Hodges side by side for second. Lots of battling further back onto the field as well. Door to door action all the way through the field. I saw that time Brian Brady in the 444 getting together just a little bit as he's trying to make his way up through the field. Just like old time, boys, I didn't even press the button to call it. <laughs> Caution on the speedway. Caution going to come out this time, and uh, I believe we've got some debris down there on the front stretch. I, I did have to chuckle with Jason there. I've done it myself. You start to make the call. You get excited about it and realize that the microphone is muted. Kind of takes the mojo away from that uh, stuff going on there. But debris getting picked up on the front stretch here with our first caution in the Thunderstock B main. Some of the best calls I ever made, none of the fans ever heard, because I always <laughs> never pressed the cut. It was always on mute. Sometimes it's better that way. I know as an announcer, the mute button comes in handy, but uh, it looks like some issues again for the 47B of Mitchell Baruso. I believe some heating issues for sure. So not the night those guys were looking for either, as that car now sits down on the infield.
Well, just having a discussion here. I believe that might be Joey Bruce, or not Mitchell Bruce, behind the wheel of the 47 tonight. So, uh, Joe uh, getting ready to start wheeling his modified again, but uh, having some issues here tonight with that Thunderstock. Out front, though, Matt Wilson, he's worked his way up to the front of the pack. He's been uh, off and on all season long, been there, but just not quite enough to get it done. Race fans, we just have uh, a, an issue here. If you have a blue van, license plate CFHD532, a blue van, license plate CFHD532, we need that van moved immediately, please. A blue van, CFHD532, if you could please move that van. So I guess for some of you race fans that don't know, it was a few years ago where Jason and I actually, uh, we were, were co-hosting the show, if you will. And uh, we had some, some fun over the couple of years, I believe it was. Uh, Chit-chatting and, and shooting the breeze, if you will, up here. And it was a lot of fun, that's for sure. Yeah, it's good. It's good to have two people up here. Sometimes you uh, you get lonely and, you know, <laughs> only one person will hear the greatest call of your life because the microphone's still on you. But. Yeah. Uh, it's fun. It's a nice view up here. They got a nice TV up here. You can see everything. So if you can't see what's going on in one and two, you just look over your shoulder and it's right there. But that's a great. It's a nice setup up here. It's a nice track. The facility looks good. A lot of speed. I was here a couple weeks ago to watch the sprint cars. They were fast, like really bad fast, and uh, it was good racing. It's definitely changed from the last time I was here at the racetrack. Uh, fans, if you're new, the last time, well. It was kind of the first season on this track here with this big, big speedway shape, if you will. Uh, the smaller D, not quite as fast, but uh, certainly things have been fast. You mentioned the sprint show. Those guys were super fast. That was one heck of a show. Those guys were pretty excited. The few guys I talked to afterwards and said, man, this place is going to be fun to run when they come back here. So looking forward to that. I know our late model guys, too. They have been, been having some fun. Uh, I'm not sure if you're an Andrew Rio fan, but he has uh, been putting on some clinics here with uh, CJ Field. Those guys have been really fun to watch. Yeah, it's really fun when they, especially when they get in a lot of traffic and they're dicing and all over the place. Uh, between him and Haskell and Field and Glassford when he's out here, they've been on the heck of a show, that's for sure. Well, just like that, we're ready to go back to green. Green flag in hand. Calvin Fox, Matt Wilson on the front row here to go back to green one more time. Side by side into one is Wilson and Fox to the outside. Down the back stretch they go. Wilson leads going into three. Fox on the outside. Brian Berry hanging tough in third. The top five move on to the A main tonight. Looks like we're going to get a caution out as we've got one slow on the back stretch there. I believe that is the 27. I want to say the 27 of John Hodges. He comes to a stop down there in turn number three, so that is gonna woe things up just a little bit here. Just as we were trying to get back to green, and as you mentioned, top five transfer, and so one and two pretty safe at this point if they can keep their nose clean, but these guys behind them have definitely got their work cut out for them. One guy I did notice, yeah, the 1A of Brett Othier not making the call here for this feature a B main feature. He was in the lineup, but uh, chit chatting over there. So maybe not thinking it's worth it to take the start. If you're uh, going to start at the tail, you've got a lot of work to do to try and get to that top five, anyways, to transfer into tonight's feature. So sometimes you make that tough call to just put it on the trailer and, and watch and see what happens the rest of the night. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was good of this track to uh, put up a little bit extra money, run 40 laps for the Thunderstocks with Maryville being off and. I noticed uh, Dave, the ever famous 49, uh, Dave Bailey showed up and Jim Lantman and Lantman Racing, they brought a couple cars down and uh, 
you get some of the best uh, up east there that are coming down to race here tonight and that's that's good that bodes well for the track that knows people will travel and uh you provide a good place to race for everybody and, and they'll come it's like the old field of dreams right you build it and they'll come and we've had some pretty good thunderstock features so far this season i know wordy i believe it was wordy in the 19 car uh, he was here when the sprint show was on and he put on a, a quite a show he'll be in tonight's feature event so going to be good come feature time but we got to get through this b main and see who the top five will be before we get into that feature event coming up later on tonight yeah speaking of wordy there that won a couple weeks ago i was up at hummerstone to watch the 75 lap and just to tell you how tough that competition is he didn't make it out of the b main into the feature so you come down and win down here and you go up there sometimes you're not as lucky as you are down here one of the drivers we haven't talked about at all he hasn't been here smolders in the 21 had a, a decent uh, showing early on i believe he punched his card into the a main but he's running out of town a lot this season so see what kind of competition he puts up for these guys tonight come feature time but before that as we mentioned back to green we go wilson out front delaware style restart heavy smoke coming out of the I don't know who car that is oh that that's sends Brian Brady around I believe we've got that's a 43 car and I believe that is an expired motor there for Gerald Martin in the 43 as he has now made his way almost all the way around the track red flag will come out just to make sure there's no fire underneath the hood of that one but uh, hold your breath for a minute here race fan some uh, smoke coming your way mosquitoes get a little break from the uh from the mosquitoes there with this smoke flagman aiden maynard up there this is probably a good time for him to eat some of his chips he's got up there i know he's got a bag where's your bag of chips at uh, we'll have to get you some up there because we know you want chips Well, as the red flag came out, they're not sure if he put any moisture or any oil or anything like that down on the racetrack. Crews were quick over there, not to anything too serious. I believe everything under control down there. So uh, just as we were talking about Gerald Martin having a good run and enjoying himself in the Thunderstock division, uh, goes and has those, uh, I have to assume, some pretty catastrophic motor issues for that kind of uh, smoke coming around here. Yeah, when, uh, when it comes out of the headers like that, and uh, it's got that smell to it, a little, bit of a, a little bit of a smell that isn't antifreeze or anything like that. So probably expired motor, but yeah, it's nice to see uh, Gerald drop. Well, not nice to see. I mean, he went from modifieds down in the Thunderstock, and it paid off right away for him. So that, that was a big help for him. He, uh, I remember him back in the day when he ran sports stock there. He was the top runner in sports stock. And, to see him back in the thunder you see all these guys like you were saying authors back in the thunderstock class yep how many people around when brad and brad ran thunder uh, the hobby class or the econo class back in the day brad mcleod and brad author like you know is are we going to see a return to that because these cars you can travel with these cars you can run you can run um humberstone you can run merrittville you can run brighton you can run brockville you can run everywhere and you can even run in the state side if they ever open the border but it's a pretty competitive class and to have 30 cars come out tonight that says a lot for the racing and the and the quality of drivers and the quality of cars out there i know it was one thing when the season started they were trying to to get a, a rule package that worked well and, and, and you touched on it there these guys racing all over and it's good when you have that opportunity if guys want to come down here if you've got an event at Merrittville or humberstone it's within reason for those guys to travel some of them have been there before but uh, definitely to have 30 cars here for an event like this it's not a, a huge payout you know 500 to win is still a, a pretty good chunk of change but these guys making the trip down and, and it's been a good class i was just actually talking with brad off really or tonight him and biznick were down there talking and said uh, himself and jimmy jones and brad off here a few of these guys or sorry brad mcleod are a few of these guys that were here you know 30 years ago racing what then was the thunderstocks or 
however it was classed back then, but uh, they've been around and, you know, will you see some of these other guys make the jump, I guess, backwards, if you will, into this Thunderstock division. So it was always fun to watch at the, at Schwiegen. They always had a big Thunderstock class. That was always enjoyable. And they would have, I think, 45 cars, I believe, the one night started a feature and it was just unbelievable. Yeah, I forgot about Oshwegan. I'm glad you mentioned that. They're not racing this year, but uh, yeah, they always had a good turnout for cars, and it's a really good group of cars now, a good class across the board. Everybody respects each other. They race well. Uh, they travel well. As you see, you had probably five or six cars come from out of town show up tonight. Merrittville wasn't racing, and they're like, we'll drive down and uh, do some racing with you. We have no problem with that. And You know, Henry and them stepped up, and added a little bit of money to the purse and I, I hear Haskell, Paul and Haskell's uh, kicked in $100 to um, to the B main winner tonight on top of what they'll get when they transfer into the A so that always helps too like it, it, it I'm really impressed with the with, with the facility the race in the track everything it, it's it's uh, it's pretty good even the race director she's okay sometimes but well that's I, I was hoping I was getting some cherry cheesecake tonight that's the only reason why I come up to say hi but uh, it's no. funny, I, I had a discussion about her a few weeks ago, and she was saying what a good cook and what a good baker she was, and I have yet to see anything, so consider yourself lucky. I haven't even been uh, privy to any of that goodness yet. Yeah, she uh, she does yeah. bake, she does, she's a good baker. I used to have to say Luke Bryant was the best for me to get treats from her, so. Well, one more time real quick before we go back to green. Blue van, CFHD 532. We need that van moved. Fox to the inside of Wilson coming out of two. Down the stretch, side by side they go. Wilson tries shutting the door, but Fox is already there. Oh, hard contact into three and four. Trevor. Trevor Jones and Scott Dunn in the 65. Those cars coming around there in turn number two. Those guys were hard contact there down through three and four as well. So uh, not showing any love for each other here as these guys run through this B main event trying to get to the front and see some not too heavy, but some front end damage there on Trevor Jones, it's 427. A little bit of debris there, got picked up off the front stretch. We'll get that cleaned up and try and get these guys lined up one more time. So you mentioned uh, Travis potentially coming up here through the, the Thunderstocks. Does he have any of these drivers that he uh, he hangs out with or might uh, look up to a little bit for advice? Yeah, him and Calvin Fox, a driver of the 93F. Uh, Calvin's 14. He's raced the go-kart for me a couple times in Travis, and he helps on our kart a lot. And uh, him and Travis are really good friends. They really like each other, and uh, he helps a lot. Like He comes to the races early. He gets here at like 4.35 o'clock. I'm not here to after 6, so... He really likes that, and he goes up to Merrittville once in a while with spent smolders, and they go up there and run. Uh, if I'm if I'm going to be up there to meet him up there, then they take him up there for me. So it uh, he, he reminds me of myself when I was a kid running around the the track and running around the pits <laughs> trying to help everybody, and everything was a big ordeal. And I remember last, two weeks ago he messaged me and he says, "Oh, or last week Ryan Bull, you hit the wall and." He's in, he's in critical condition, and I'm like, okay. And then I talked to Ryan a half hour later, and he was fine. He just said he got a little toasty in the car there when he hit the wall. Absolutely, yeah, definitely some uh, flame action there. But looks like Calvin Fox in the 93 will lead these guys around. Delaware style restart until we get down inside of five. So the youngster going to bring him back to green. Wilson in tow behind him. Ryan Barry in the 75. Scott Dunn looking, making the three wide down the back stretch between Jones and Barry. Calvin Fox, your leader, coming out of four. So 
Flagman Aiden, uh, Aiden Maynard with the halfway signs. Halfway out. Calvin Fox, your leader, opening up a sizable lead over the 42 of Matt Wilson. Barry running third, Jones fourth, Dunnan fifth. Those top five, if the race ended right now, would be in the feature. So Jeff Drummond in this 76 car, he is going to have to get his butt in gear. We've got one coming around. John Lynch in the four brings it around, but continues on. We will stay under green, keep these guys rolling along. We'll have to see if the 76 of Drummond has enough to get to the rear bumper of the 65 and punch his car to this feature coming up as his 65 slides up just a little bit. Top five guaranteed their spot, so you've got to work hard for that fifth position. Alvin Fox, your leader, Wilson second. Barry third, Trevor, Trevor Jones running fourth. Drummond to the inside of Dunn. Dunn shuts the door. Three laps to go according to my calculations. Well, these drivers will have their work cut out for them a pretty short amount of time before we get into our feature event for these. And that's gonna be a 40 lap feature event. So not easy to handle here. They'll get these cars tuned up as we get down to two laps to go for race leader Calvin Fox. Fox stretches it out just a little bit down to take the white flag this time by. Drummond's gotten by the, the 65 of Mike Dunn. Fox, your leader in the one and two. He's going down the back stretch. People always remember their first win, whether it's a B main, a heat race, or the feature. Going in the three out of four. Your winner, the 93F of Calvin Fox. Second, the 42 of Matt Wilson. Third, the 427 of Trevor Jones. Fourth, the 75 of Barry. And rounding out the top five, I believe, was the 76 of Jeff Drummond. So that is going to do it for our Thunderstock B main. Top five have now punched their cards for the A main event. 20 cars will start that feature event. That brings us up to our intermission. And uh, it should be interesting when I know these guys, normally it's, uh, it's not quite the distance, but 40 laps the distance tonight for our Thunderstock feature. So these guys are gonna have their work cut out for them. And uh, before you go, Jason, any predictions on a feature win for the Thunderstocks tonight. Well, everybody knows who's been here, seen Dave Bailey run. I don't know where he starts, but him and Shaw are always tough. Um, there's a couple fast cars in the back too. I think Spencer Smolders, once he, if he gets his car back together, I know he took a hard lick there from, uh, from Joey Brusso there in the heat race. Uh, he was looking pretty stout in the, in the first four or five laps of that. But, uh, yeah, I look for Lantman's pretty strong in the 28 car. Um, it's really anybody's. Like, you, you've got a good core of drivers here. Uh, Grant, uh, Grant is pretty good. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of top running cars here that uh, – Bailey's strong. I've seen him go from last to first in, in, a, in a feature. So I'm not going to pick him because that's the easy pick. But I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm going to think a local or – well, local to me. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Spencer Smolders is going to be the one that's going to bring it home tonight. He's starting back, and he's pretty fast. And I, I think that's going to be the guy that's going to do it. Well, he will have his work cut out for him, and uh, they've all got their work cut out for him with 40 laps. And before you get out of here, how about you pick a 50-50 winner for us? Uh, the total tonight is $1,440. So thank you very much for all you race fans for supporting the Junior Fan Club. That money will go a long way to helping these events and having some fun here. Jason's going to reach in and make somebody's day with $1,440. Uh, we, we do accept donations here in the announcer's booth as well. Get your tickets out, race fans, 50-50. It's a purple ticket, folks. If you have a purple ticket, then you're in luck. If you don't, 
I'm just kidding. It's a red ticket, everybody. I, I suddenly remember why everybody always said how bad that Will guy was. He was such a pain in the butt. He was just never nice to anybody, getting everybody's hopes up. But we got our 50-50 winner. Get those tickets out of your pockets, race fans. Race fans, you ready for your 50-50 number? Red ticket. Zero, zero, one, nine, seven, five, six. Zero, zero, one, nine, seven, five, six. If you have that number, come on to here. Meet the ladies downstairs, two beautiful ladies. Thank you again for supporting. Jason, I want to thank you for taking some time away from your uh, busy day of watching the races anyways, uh, having some hot dogs, doing what we do, and uh, joining me up in the booth here. Oh, I appreciate it. I originally come up here to get something to eat, and, <laughs> and then I was wanted to say hi to Tammy because if I didn't say hi to her, then I wasn't going to get any cheesecake, but she didn't bring any cheesecake, so I said hi for nothing. But I'm glad I come up, and uh, who knows what happens in the future or anything, but... Uh, Maybe if you're okay with it, uh, for that 40-lap Thunderstock race, if you need help with that, maybe I'll pop back on up here. If it's okay with you guys in the stands to have two of us up here for the Thunderstock feature, and uh, we'll see what happens, and I'll go get something to eat right now. Well, you've heard it here first. We're going to have co-color co commentators, if you will, for tonight's Thunderstock feature event. That will be coming up. In just a few minutes, we've got a couple features to get to before that. Our late model feature will be the first out onto the racetrack tonight. Stretch your legs, get something to eat real quick before we get back to racing action here at Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. Obviously, they are going to roll off first for the features tonight. Drivers making their way out onto the racetrack. We see a few more now rolling out of the chute. So as always, if you are a fan, as we mentioned these names, make sure you hoot and holler as best you can. Give these guys... A little excitement here tonight. All right, fans, we are going to run down this driver lineup here for you for our late model feature event. Starting scratch on the tail here tonight, the 06 of Jordan Van Hall. In front of him, we have the 60 car of Dale Glassford. Outside of him making his first appearance tonight, the new 66 car for Tyler Lozon. How you doing? In front of him on the inside, the double zero car of Mike Dale. In front of him on the inside as well, we have the 43 of Cody Vandewinkle. Cody's got some fans. Outside of him in the 20 car, we have the 20, it is a 20, of Dwayne Malott. 
And inside of him, the new but old 29. Which Bonner are you? Ryan. He's Ryan Bonner. I joke because I've messed up all the Bonners here. In front of him in the 34 car, the bad, fast grandpa of Jim Jones. Starting on the outside of row number four, it is the double zero of Jim Dale. Jim Dale. Inside of row number four it is the 38 of Doris Lajeunesse. Row number three on the outside, last week's feature winner, the four car of C.J. Field. Row number three on the inside, it's the 22S of Brian Spielman. Moving through, row number two on the outside, it is the 11 car of Brad Bloomfield. Inside of him, the 1A car tonight, driven by Andrew Riom. And starting on the front row for tonight's feature event, on the outside we have the RH21 of Greg Haskell. And starting on the pole for tonight's late model feature event, Mr. Fat Guy Racing himself, Mike Lewis. We will give these drivers a minute to get strapped back in. And if you will, race fans, give me a hand. We will holler those famous words here for their racers. It will be just a minute to get them strapped in, get the receivers in their ears. Just having a quick conversation with uh, driver 22, Brian Spielman, asking him the difference between the modified and the late model, and he said he's definitely uh, enjoying the late model. It's a little bit easier to drive than the modified, so having some fun behind the wheel of the 22 late model. Well, race fans, I just found a little youngster up here. His name is Orion. And once we get these drivers strapped in, he's going to help me Give the command we all know so well. Orion, do you have a favorite driver out here tonight? CJ. Anybody but CJ, you said? <laughs> Just CJ. So you like Andrew Riom? I said CJ. Oh, CJ. You like CJ. Okay, my mistake. I'm sorry. I'm just messing with you. CJ was a great driver. He had a good run last week. Were you here to watch him win last week? No. Did you, did you hear about it? Did you shake his hand? No. Well, tonight you might have to give another high five if he wins again. Okay. okay. I love having conversations with youngsters. It, it makes me feel, you know, like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> have you been to the track before? Yes. Do you like coming to the racetrack? Yes. What is your favorite class at the racetrack? Do you like the late models or the modifieds or the mini mods? You like the mini mods? Do you think someday you could drive a race car? Okay, sign him up. Driver for hire here. Orion wants to drive a race car, so if you have a mini mod and a seat available, he might uh, have a couple years before he gets in there, but how old are you? Eight, so nine, okay. So he's, he could drive next year, maybe. Maybe for Christmas you'll get one. That'd be cool. Somebody's going to give me a big bunch of trouble when I'm talking here. I think we are just about ready. A couple more folks to get off the racetrack. Now, do you know what words we have to say? That's right. So I'm going to count to three in just a minute here, and we have to say it as loud as we can. Getting the thumbs up, all these drivers ready to go. So on the count of three, race fans. One, two, three.
drivers set and ready to go. Track ready to go. Off they head for their pace laps here before we cut them loose. For our Andre Lanou and for Auto Sales Late Model Feature Event. Again, I want to thank you all for joining us here tonight at Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. I hope you're enjoying yourself, having a good old time here. We've got five features ready to go here for you tonight. Late models starting it off 20 laps the distance. Michael Lewis, Greg Haskell on the front row, ready to do battle. Haskell looking to pick up another feature win this season. Michael Lewis in the 05 has had some good runs, just not able to get it done and get that thing parked in victory lane yet this year. Behind him, uh, a couple of folks who have got it done. Andrew Reom, CJ Fields starting back in the second and third row respectively. A lot of good fast cars here for our late model feature. Another one, uh, the 66 of Tyler Lowe's on. First time behind the wheel of that new machine. We'll have to see how he can get it done coming from tail of the field. One more time around before we cut them loose. Late model feature event. Can CJ Field in the four car get it done back to back? Clearing them out, getting them ready to go. Last time down the backstretch, green flag in hand. Lewis and Haskell down on a four, getting ready. Race fans, let's fire it up. Late model racing action. Well, Haskell out front in the RH21, going to lead lap number one. Lewis slides to second, CJ Field doing battle with him down the inside, down the back stretch. Four trying to take that position away, Riom in tow. Things heating up early already. Haskell with a few car lengths out front. Field now in second. Riom looking to the inside of Dale to, tr to Lewis to try and take that third spot away. They will door to door down across the stripe. Again, Lewis Riom battling down the back stretch for that third position. Haskell out front, eight cars ahead of the four of Field. Caution out, caution out. I believe we've got some debris on the track over there in turn number three. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but a little lump of something over there on the racetrack. So that's going to bunch these guys up just a little bit. Not the news that... Yeah, a little piece of sheet metal laying down there. It looks like on the racetrack, the cause of the caution. So once we get an opening, crews will get out there to get that debris picked up. My mistake, it looks like the, the radiator shield off of somebody's car, so a little screen in front of the rad trying to keep all the mud and dirt out of that machine has come off of somebody's car, so we'll see if that affects anybody's overheating issues. But out front, though, Haskell in the 21, definitely not the caution he wanted to see. That's going to bunch these guys up behind him. He was starting to stretch it out just a little bit. Field. Rion Lewis, Brad Bloomfield still running inside the top five. Good run for him so far in that 11 car, starting from the second row. So things spreading out pretty quick early on here as the late models start to run through. 20 laps was the distance, a few in the books after that. 
White flag out. We'll get these guys bunched up. Delaware style restart. I believe, uh, I have to assume, CJ will choose the bottom line there from the second position. He's been running the bottom pretty much the whole time. A little bit of moisture down there. We'll see how Riom can carry things off of the high side. Haskell choosing right about the middle of the racetrack. Seems to be getting a good run out of there. So, as Rob Young mentioned earlier on tonight, uh, as the night goes on, especially now, lots of room for these guys to run. A couple grooves to choose from. Some moisture down on the bottom. A bit of a berm up on the top. So we'll give these guys plenty of real estate to work as we bunch them up one more time. Haskell going to bring them down through three and four one more time before we cut them loose again for our late model feature. Haskell that time on the bottom through three and four. Side by side behind him, Field and Riom battle for that second position. Bloomfield in the fourth position. Jimmy Dale now up inside the top five in that double zero. So Mike Lewis falling off just a little bit as he slides back through the field. Up front though, Haskell still leading these guys around. Riom now to second. down on the bottom again seems to be his line of choice Rio again on the high side both of those guys battle hard Haskell out front though he's running the bottom down there through one and two gets a good run off of two down the back stretch he goes into three and four smooth again on the bottom Again, a good run from Brad Bloomfield there, not gaining any ground on the top three, but running strong in the fourth position. Jimmy Dale in fifth. Out front though, Haskell still the class of the field, leading these guys around, starting to pull away just a little bit from Rio and Field. Now about three to four car lengths as he heads down the back stretch over Rio. Halfway, halfway that time. Down inside, 10 to go here for race leader Haskell. Well, this long green flag run definitely helping the RH21 of Haskell as he stretches it out just a little bit more. But behind him, though, CJ and Rio battling hard as they have so far this season. Rio, or sorry, Haskell now about four lengths as he will start to close in on some of the slower traffic now. Field to the inside of Rio once again down into two, one and two they go. This time Haskell will close on the tail of the double zero of Mike Dale. See how this slower traffic now hinders Haskell if it will slow him up just a little bit as he has to work his way through the field. And again, door to door, they come down across the stripe. Haskell to the inside of Lewis now, down the back stretch he goes. Puts a little bit more room between him and second place of Rio. Five laps to go this time. Again, Haskell stretching it out just a little bit more over Rio and Field. And then 10 cars back to Bloomfield as they head down. Caution comes out. Caution comes out. Not what Haskell wanted to see, that is for sure. So that is going to bunch these guys up. It will be a single file restart as we are just down inside of five laps to go. Chunk of metal down there on the back stretch just coming out of turn number two. Safety crews over there to get that picked up. 
but definitely not the caution that Haskell wanted to see late in the race. They're starting to pull away from the field for sure. And this will bunch these guys up. So again, just down inside of five laps to go here. We'll have to see what kind of restart Haskell gets here to pull him off to pick up his second feature win of the season. So Haskell, Rio, and Field, Bloomfield still strong in that fourth position. Jim Dale Jr. rounding out the top five. It will be a single file restart now. flag in hand this time these drivers will cut them loose Haskell pacing the field down through three and four one more time coming out of turn number four and we will unleash to continue in our late model feature Haskell on the bottom but Rio with a good line on the high side That time by Riom gets him at the stripe. Back to back, or back door to door they go. Down through one and two, Riom now stretches it out just a little bit over Haskell. Two laps left to go for Riom now at the point. Door to door they go behind him. CJ Field on the inside of Haskell trying to take away that second position. They will come out of two down the back stretch side by side. Down into three and four comes race leader. White flag or in hand one more time around the speedway for Andrew Riom. Riom looking for a little bit of redemption after coming home second last week has got this thing to the point now down to the checker flag he comes out of three and four andrew rio will be your race leader followed by cj field greg haskell brad bloomfield and jim dale jr rounding out the top five so a late race caution opens the door andrew rio taking advantage and he will be your feature winner once again behind the wheel of the 1a car andrew rio Tonight's late model feature winner. Heck of a run from all of these drivers. A couple minor cautions for debris, but a great show here from our late models tonight. These guys have been running strong all season long. Glad to uh, see a bunch of them finish. Tyler Lowe's on there in the 66. Glad he can get it done tonight to keeping it on the track with that new hot rod. Just a couple cars that made their way to the infield there, unfortunately, during that event. But uh, just like that, we are going to continue on into our modified feature event, Shinkles Gourmet Meats. Modified feature event, 20 laps to the distance.
Well, I will run down the list here in front of me for tonight's feature event. Not seeing all these cars, but uh, we'll run down the list here. 28, that is Tate O'Leary. In front of him, the 11 car is Phil Villaranda. Brad McLeod in the 43 car. Justin Mills in the 6M. Mario Toniolo in the 14 car. Just wondering what the hold of. I forgot about Jimmy Dale, who just got done in the late model race. So Jimmy Dale jumping seats. He will be in behind the wheel of his modified. As I mentioned earlier on, uh, he's finally back behind the wheel. He had some motor issues a few weeks ago, but he finally got that power plant put back together. So he is back behind the wheel of the modified, something we haven't seen in a few weeks here at the racetrack. see the 34 car of Jim Jones he was another uh, casualty there from the late model feature he's just making his way into the pits as we get these guys lined up the other driver I again forgot about Spielman doing double duty as well tonight in the 22 s so he's back out there in the modified so one of the cars I'm also not seeing Tim Richardson in the 5x I don't know if he might just be behind Jimmy Dale that I see now pulling his way out onto the racetrack Jimmy Dale set to, set to start tonight's feature event in the second row, so he will fall in the in line there. One more time, I'll run down the list. I'm not seeing Tim Richardson making the call, but in front of him, Joel Dick in the 09D. The 28 is Tate O'Leary. 33 is Chris Fiddler. Phil Villaranda in the 11. Curtis King in the 07. Brad McLeod in the 43. Brian Spielman in the 22S. Justin Mills in the 6M. Jim Dale Jr. in the double zero, Patrick Lajeunesse in the 98P, and on the front row, Mario Toniolo and Drew Smith in the 86 car, ready to go for our modified feature event. out front things shaping up well for Mario Toniolo doing a battle with Drew Smith in the 86 both of those guys run it strong Toniolo to the high side Drew Smith down on the bottom through three and four Toniolo gonna lead that lap across the stripe
Jim Dale Jr. currently sits in third of Justin Mills in the 6M trying to do battle with him on the outside. And Spielman now looks to the inside of Mills to take that fourth position away. One more time into three and four. Tony Olo and Drew Smith door to door as they come out of four. This time I believe it's gonna be Drew Smith at the line there, so he will take that lap. Back and forth they go. Good battle out front, good battle a little further back. As Justin Mills now stretches it out a little bit over Spielman in the 22S. Jimmy Dale sticks his nose up in there trying to get some things done, making his way into the third position. Mills now looks to the outside of Jim Dale, trying to take away that fourth position. Down into three and four they go. Mills on the high side. Dale down on the bottom. Drew Smith now your race leader. Tony Olo slides into second. Good three-car battle as Spielman now looks to the outside of Jimmy Dale, and taking away that fourth position. Now to the inside of Mills. So Spielman on the move here, up inside the top five. Guy on the move a little farther back, Joel Dick in the 09, trying to make his way up through traffic, started close to the back of this one. He looks to the inside of Brad McLeod as they battle a little further back. Dick now to the inside of King as they head down into one and two. Spielman noses his way up in the front there to the bumper of Tony Olo trying to take that second spot away now. So coming up on halfway here for our modified feature, Drew Smith in the 86. Continues to lead, Tony Olo running in second and Spielman in third. Smith has been consistently fast so far this season in the 86, so not surprised to see him out front here, but Tony Olo kind of shocking things as he's now battling for second with Spielman as they head down into one and two. Spielman looks to the inside, trying to take that spot away. Slides up just a little bit, shuts the door on Tony Olo as they head down the backstretch into three. Spielman now sets his sights on race leader Drew Smith, closes in just a little bit on him. Good battle shaping up out front. Spielman trying to pick up his first feature win of the season in the modified division. Down into three and four they go. We've got a slow car down on the front stretch. That's Curtis King in the 07. Hopefully he can get that thing limped around to see if we can keep this under green. As the leaders now come through, are coming up on some slow traffic. Spielman down to the inside, door to door with Drew Smith down into three and four, nudges him just a little bit. Smith loose but holds the lead. Spielman now to the outside of him as they battle down into one and two. Both leaders coming up on Fiddler in the 33 car, see if he plays any kind of factor. As Spielman now to the point on the outside around Fiddler, some slow traffic ahead of the leaders. Five laps to go as Spielman now stretches it out just a little bit as he works past the slower car of O'Leary in the 28. Tony Olo now battles to the inside of Drew Smith trying to take that second position away. Fiddler in the 33 now to the infield so his feature done. Spielman out front. Stretches out two cars over. Drew Smith as we get down into the closing laps here of our modified feature. Well, cars starting to spread out just a little bit as we get down to two laps to go. Two laps left here in our modified feature. Spielman 
three cars over Smith. Tony Olo not gaining any ground on the top two with Justin Mills just behind him. Down into one and two they go. Smith closes just a little bit, but Spielman with a run out of two. Down the back stretch into three and four. White flag this time by for the race leader. One more time around the speedway. Hard through one and two, down the back stretch they go. Spielman stretches it out just a little bit. Down to the bottom of three and four. Smith, nothing for him. Brian Spielman in the 22S is going to be your modified feature winner. Smith second, Justin Mills in third, Mario Toniola in fourth, and Jim Dale Jr. rounding out the top five. What a great feature run for all of these drivers here tonight, and a big shout out to Spielman. Brian Spielman in the 22S picking up his first modified feature of the season. After just telling me a few minutes ago that the mo or the late model was so much easier to drive than the modified comes out here. And after the season he's had so far in the modified, gotta feel good for him to finally get that monkey off his back, picking up that feature win and didn't do it easily. Had to work his way through the field just a little bit. So. That's off to Spielman, tonight's feature winner in the 22S. Always nice to see some good long green flag stretches there and a good run from our modifieds tonight. Shinkles Gourmet Meats modifieds and uh, joining me up here in the booth again before we get underway for our Thunderstock feature, we have Mr. Whittle himself. And uh, track conditions haven't changed too much since the B main. They've changed quite a bit since the heat races earlier on tonight so if you're Steve Shaw you ran in the first heat race is that a disadvantage now coming into the feature as the track has changed so much but he's got himself a good starting position uh, for, for Steve Shaw no I mean he's raced he's probably raced as long as I've been alive and I'm 45 so I don't think uh, I don't think it'll affect him too much the other counters it might affect him a little bit but these guys are pretty good I think they, I think they've come to expect that and I know six people lot of them up in the fence there later after the heat races to be made checking the track up. So they did take a peek at it. Yeah, it's definitely going to be something different, but nothing I'm sure they haven't come to expect or see at their home tracks as well. So whether you're a, a local or whether you're from out of town, it's somewhat of an even playing field. Some of these drivers have been here before. Bailey has been here earlier this season, picking up a feature win, uh, wording the 19 as well. So a good group of cars to start this 40 lap Thunderstock feature. And when you've got some heavy hitters starting right from the front row, it's definitely gonna get interesting as this hopefully becomes a long green flag run. We'll run down the list here real quick for our Thunderstock feature starting at the back in the 75 is Ryan Berry. 76 car is Jeff Drummond. The 42 of Matt Wilson. The 427 of Trevor Jones. G72 of Marcel Godet. The 93F of Calvin Fox. The 19 is Kyle Wirt. 21 is Spencer Smolders. The 5G of Gord Grant. The 28D of Donnie Lentman. The, or sorry, the 36 car tonight driven by Alan Rion. 92 is Paige Lanou. Row number four is the 28 of Jim Lantman. 98 of Andrew Mayu. The 327 of Sean Jones. The 96T of Todd Shaw. Row number two, we've got Logan Sawchuk, Sudik. Dave Bailey in the 49. Barry Watson in the 45. And Steve Shaw in the 96, 20 cars ready to do battle, 40 laps to distance, Thunderstock feature. Steve Shaw to an early lead, Watson second. Followed close behind by Logan Shudek. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry for any family members. Bailey to the outside of Shudek.
Well, something to consider, a, a, a feature that is twice as long as it normally is. Obviously, uh, tires play a factor of fuel. I don't know if that's going to play any kind of factor, but just uh, keeping active for 40 laps instead of 20 has got to wear on you just a little bit more as well. So we'll see how some of these drivers manage as Bailey now moves to the inside of the 45 car. Yeah, fuel shouldn't be a problem for these guys. Uh, they ran 75 laps there a couple weeks ago up in Humberstone, so the track configuration is pretty similar. But yeah, while I'm saying that, Bailey's looking to the inside of Watson. Shaw stretching his lead just a little bit. Further back, you got a couple of track uh, locals. You got the 92, Paige Lanou, the 21 of Spencer Smolders. They're side by side going into one and two. Looks like caution's gonna be on the speedway for debris of some kind up on the cushion. As Tony Stewart used to say in his NASCAR days, Jacques Debris has made an appearance on the track. <laughs> so that's gonna roll things up just a little bit as we get rolling here through our Thunderstock feature event. No surprise shot from the pole, obviously you're gonna run away and, and get things rolling for himself, but. A lot of these guys further back uh, definitely going to work their way through the field. I'm sure we'll see that as time goes on. But 40 laps, lots of time to move your way to the front. But even by the time you get there, you still have to make it work and get past these guys out front that have been there. So uh, a lot of things to consider in 40 laps. But hopefully we get this thing back to green and things run out pretty quick. Yeah, tires will play a factor tonight. There's no doubt about it. 20 20 laps, not too bad. 40 laps, tires get hot, changes. The right side grows a little quicker than the left side, and then that changes the stagger in the rear end and upsets the numbers in the car and uh, becomes a handful. So if you're watching a car later tonight and he's, you know, he's running great, but 25, 30 laps into it, he starts pushing, then you know that, you know, the tires have grown and he, uh, he's having a handful. Definitely some of these guys, it's not quite as dry as it was earlier on. Some of the moisture has come back up. Lots of moisture, I believe, on the bottom. Not much of a, a berm on the top as you see at some tracks as they go through, but uh, definitely changing things in the setup as we roll through. So just trying to sort out the Delaware style restart. Everybody eager to get this thing going, but uh, gonna hold them back for just a minute or we're gonna go green. I always say the first four look good, let them go. The rest will, the rest will fall in <laughs> after. When you get shafted a couple spots going in the restart, they'll fix themselves. Sooner or later, somebody's bumper to bumper will fix their positioning. All kinds of racing all the way through the field. I'm sure glad I've got this screen up here to watch as things get spread out. Bailey and Shaw now down the back stretch side by side. Kyle Wirt touches the wall coming down the back stretch and that's gonna cut his night short. I'm assuming a right front flat on that 19 machine. So he is now slow. Dave Bailey took the lead there at the start finish line. The caution comes out now, he's the leader. They're given the flag for him to move to the infield. He makes the, the long trek into the infield. Tough break for him. Long trip for Word in the 19 car. Hopefully he can at least get it limped back to the pits perhaps without causing any kind of issues as the race leaders go by him, no problem. Bailey Shaw. Logan in the 53, both of us trying to figure out how to pronounce that last name, but regardless, doing well as he runs strong, falls back just a few positions behind second position of Shaw, but a few cars ahead of one of the Lampman machines. Bailey, your leader, but Shaw's not letting him get away, keeping him in arm's length. All we need is a caution. Oh, we might get that right there. That looks like the five of... Uh, Barry Grant gone around in turns three and four, bringing out the caution. Just as you say, we need a caution. He does come around. That's the 5G of Gord Grant comes down to the bottom of turn number three, bringing out a caution. So that's going to bunch this field up just a little bit. 
Barry Grant, yeah, Carbs, uh, Gord Grant driver. Gord Grant been running pretty strong this season. He's surprised a few people uh, behind the wheel of the 5G, but not having any luck tonight there, bringing it around in turn number four. Yeah, I talked to him at the beginning of the year, and he's just going out and having fun and enjoying himself. And I talked to him a little bit later, and that's what he said. Now that he's relaxed and enjoying himself, he knows he can, he's got the car, he's got the talent. It'll all come together. It's one of them nights you'll have a magical night, and you'll be sitting in victory lane. He's had a couple of good battles this season. I know the one night with the, the, one of the Jones cars, him, they went side by side, door to door, and a lot of fun to watch there. So I'm sure he'll get his picked up pretty soon in the 5G, but uh, going to have his work cut out for him if it's going to be tonight, that is for sure. Just getting word on the radio, the two-minute rule in effect here tonight. So we will have two minutes to get that tire changed. So I'm sure probably part of his strategy to get that car limped back to the pits in order for him to get the tire changed. If he pulls to the infield, he doesn't have a chance. So now he will have a chance. He'll be at the tail of the field, but at least get an opportunity to work his way back up and uh, gain some ground, gain a few positions. So uh, I guess strategy uh, played out for him well. Got that car to the pits. Going to take a couple of minutes. Interesting to think, I know we don't have any NASCAR caliber pit crews in the back, but these guys uh, can get a tire change pretty quick. It, it surprised me a few times, that's for sure. Yeah, usually you see if you're pitter, pitted around some people, they'll uh, everybody will come to the rescue, especially to help get the, the car up off the ground to get the jack underneath of it. Uh, usually a flat tire like that, it makes it difficult to get the jack out of under it, and by the time they do get the jack up, the, uh, the tire's all ready to come off. Yeah, I'm sure they've got some spares ready to go, and... Uh, while we've got a little break in the action, a break in the action here, we want to give a big shout out to a few of our additional lap sponsors here, making this purse possible tonight. As we mentioned, five hundred dollars to the winner, but second place also gets four hundred dollars. So, a big thanks to Digger Wright Construction, Wilson Construction. Joe's One Stop Truck Repair, Jeff's Roofing. Bob and Jermaine Marchand as well, kicking in a little bit here. So big thanks to all them for supporting, making this uh, feature event tonight. And uh, so just confirming here, as we mentioned, uh, somebody gets the big paycheck for $500, but there's still some pretty good money for second and third, I believe, as we see the 19 of Kyle Wirt trying to make his way back onto the track. Uh, obviously not a regular, so maybe not aware that it's uh, enter through number four and off in turn number three. So just looking at the breakdown here. So even if you finish fourth, you still have a chance at $200. So that's not a bad payday at all to finish fourth down to, to $145. So some of these uh, purse prizes tonight are almost double. The, the leader tonight will take home double what they normally would here for a Thunderstock feature. So uh, well worth the trip for some of these guys. In this case, uh, potentially Dave Bailey uh, looking to take home some winnings, but uh, Steve Shaw would be happy to take that envelope as well. So still lots and lots and lots of racing left to go here before we can even talk about somebody getting close to winning this thing.
just discussing things up here, checking out the, the, the purse, and definitely pretty cool. Uh, I gotta ask your opinion, Jason, the, the, the two minute tire rule change. Uh, I'm on the fence about it. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not a fan of it. I know in a case like this, definitely benefits a guy like Word who has come a long way, gives him a second chance, but uh, is, is the two minute rule something you think that we need here on a regular feature event? Um, I, I'm not a fan of it either, I don't like it. Uh, only because traveling, you see the traveling series. A lot of them will, like the World Outlaws and that, in the Lucas Oil, they'll give you two laps. You get two laps to change the tire and you're back out on the track. There's people drive hours and hours and hours and you cut a tire down, that's that's the luck of the draw. One week it'll go your way, the next week it won't. And But I understand, you, you know, it's a big race, 40 laps. You want everybody to finish as much as you can. So it, uh, I'm not a fan of it. He's back out and you know, it'd be nice yep. to see him finish up in the top four or five there to, to, to prove us all wrong, and it was worth it. So, but I, I'm not a particular a big fan of it particularly. But we agree. Yeah, that's just my uh, just my thoughts. All right, one to go. Bailey's your leader. Shaw is second. Schwittick is third, fourth, I believe, is the 28 of Jim Lampman. And inside of him, I believe, was my pick for tonight's winner, the 21 of Spencer Smolders. Started 14th, is running fifth. Bailey's still your leader. Schwittick and Schaff running side by side for second and third. Fourth is Lantman. Fifth is Smolder. Sixth is Lantman. Seventh to 427. I believe of, uh, of Trevor Jones. Just like that, we've got another car around, and in this position, it is the 21 of Spencer Smolders, and the caution will come out. Spencer just getting a little squirrely down there, getting loose in turn number four, so that's going to uh, put his good run to an end as he will now join the tail of the field and have to work his way back up through this field. So you have to wonder if some of these drivers, do you, you're not necessarily sandbagging, but are you just kind of ride, not riding around, but you're holding your position, just trying to, to finish. And then as you get closer down to our closing laps, do you cut it loose or do you just go, go hard the whole time? How do you, you plan it out for 40 laps here is definitely something I'm, I'm curious about. Yeah, it's tough. I don't know if any of these drivers in this field know how to pace themselves. <laughs> They go all out for if it's 10 laps, 20 laps, 75 laps, 100 laps. I imagine they'll go all out and hope for the best. Yeah, it's easy to sit here and say just hold back a little bit, but uh, you put the helmet on, you're in traffic, and it's just a, a hammer down, get to the front and go. And we are lined up, ready to go one more time. Looks a lot like our last restart here. Bailey out on the point in the 49 car. Schwittick and Shaw behind him in row number two. Well, down into one and two, and things are picking up. Cars all over the place, and we've got one high. Marcel Gaudet gets up into the wall, and Matt Wilson makes his way through the infield, but everybody rolls along. Going to stay green. Just about four wide as we get a couple cars coming around. A 
A bunch of cars come together there on the front stretch. We've got the 327 of Sean Jones. Calvin Fox, I believe, in the 93F, and Alan Riom in the 36, all involved there. A couple of those guys with nowhere to go as the 327 came around. I think the 327 woke up just a little bit as he got into the back of uh, the 93 car, so he was trying to hold up to let Calvin get his position back, but uh, none of these guys had anywhere to go. Yeah, that happens when you're running in a pack like that. One guy goes around, and a couple of them skated by. The 43, uh, 42 of Matt Wilson skated by. Uh, I think very, uh, very Grant. <laughs> Gore, <I> mean, Gore, <laughs> the carburetor car? Gore Grant. Barry Grant builds carburetors, as a lot of these know. That's what I was thinking. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, a couple of the ones taking the high side made it through, but unfortunately the 36 of Alan Riom and the 327 is Sean Jones and the 93F of Calvin Fox, your B main winner. Unfortunately, right now he uh, he's stuck there. He might he might be okay to go. I don't know. It's hard to say, but uh, looks like they're waving the 36 back. Maybe see if he can back up. But it, uh, they'll get this sorted out here and we're under red flags conditions, and we'll see uh, we'll see what happens. As you can see there, the the, the handsome fellow there in the 92 shirt, that's uh, B Lanou. His, uh, his daughter there in the 92, that's Paige. She looks like she's got some front end damage, but don't see anything rubbing on the tires from up here. So uh, she might be able to continue. It's her uh, her first year in Thunderstock class. She uh, come from the go-kart ranks there. She ran at 5150. She's run here at, uh, at South Buxton when they had a kart track and uh, runs at uh, Route 1 Raceway there in uh, Fletcher. But uh, yeah, they're down there uh, inspecting the damage and. I'm sure a lot of the crew members along the fence there are probably running over to the car, waving at the drivers, telling them everything's okay. And but uh, we, uh, it's tough. These guys get racing side by side, and there's no room for error. So when, when something goes wrong, it uh, it happens very quick. Just want to remind you, race fans, please keep back from the fence. Safety officials out there tending to the 327. We see him making his way to the ambulance. So out of driver is out of the car. Glad to see that, but uh, he's going to make a quick trip in the ambulance. It looked like he was holding his arm there just a little bit. So obviously a bit of a lick there for Sean in the 327. Glad to see him out of the car okay. So he will take a little ride in the ambulance over, make sure he's good to go before we uh, get things going once again. We'll get these cars separated. Again, safety crew doing a, a great job as they do each and every week. I, I can't praise these guys enough. And uh, so we'll be putting the 327 up on the hook. We'll see what happens with the 93 car. See a couple of the Lampman cars parked uh, on the back stretch there. The 28D, Donnie Lampman, I believe it is, and the 28. It's always funny when cars look so much the same, you try and distinguish them until they're sitting there still and then you know who they are. But uh, I believe all three of those cars sitting there, I believe are all from uh, Merrittville tonight, if I'm not wrong. But I'm an announcer and I'm usually wrong, so. Announcers are never wrong, no matter what we do, no matter what happens, we're never wrong. But yeah, that is the 28D of uh, Donnie Lantman and the 28 of Jim Lantman. Uh, them four in our picture right now, we see with Steve Shaw there, they, uh, they all run together, usually up at Merrittville and Hummerstone. There, the 49 of Dave Bailey. He's a constant, constant feature winner at any track he goes to. He, uh, when he pulls into the gates, a lot of people think they're racing for second. So he's already in their heads when he gets in the gate, which is an advantage for him because he, uh, it makes him work a lot less. So we see the 327 making its way onto the pits. Uh, no driver in the car as he's made his way to the infield ambulance. Going to get checked out. We'll get the 93F of Calvin Fox. Not sure if he's going to be able to continue, if we're going to bring this other wrecker over. 
and possibly put to that 93 on the hook. Unfortunate for him after a great run, finishing uh, first in the B main, as you mentioned, and uh, looks like his night may have been cut a bit short here. No place to go. Getting caught up in traffic there with a 327. Well, they sort things out here. Uh, Flagman Aiden Maynard sitting up there waiting patiently for uh, for him to wave his flags. A uh, little fun fact information, a little tidbit you'd want to know about your flagman, Aiden Maynard. He, uh, you see him with all the fancy waving and spinning the flags and all that. I've been told he does that in the mirror some night at home. He'll, he'll be practicing, he'll get going and get them flags waving and he even breaks a stick every now and then. But uh, he's pretty good at it. He grew up idolizing flagmans the flagman from Oshwegan. Uh, I remember him a little kid down in turn one and two. Going into one there, he'd be waving the flag. And uh, it's uh, it's nice to see a kid full, uh, fulfill and live out his dreams. He's a great kid. He, uh, sometimes he's a lot funner to watch than the action on the track. Boy, them tow truck operators sure getting their money's worth today, dragging cars to the infield. A little sand going down, I believe, over a little coolant leak that come out of the 93F that ended his night early. Nice to see the 36 of uh, Alan Rion be able to drive away from this and continue. Crew members up at the fence taking a look at Alan's car, making sure he's okay, giving him the thumbs up or not. Now we're back rolling here. Just some discussions up here in the uh, tower of what to ha what happened and what uh, what to do. There's a crew member of uh, Brian Spielman's crew coming back from Victory Lane, I presume, gentlemen. Yeah, good job, boy. It was fast tonight. Nice to see him in Victory Lane. One of the drivers pulling double duty this year out at South Buxton or Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. Sorry. Looks like the lineup is set. We got one to go. Bailey, your leader. Shaw, second. Schwittick, third. Lantman, fourth. Lantman, fifth. Todd Shaw, sixth.
Bailey leading him in the three and four, coming out of four, waiting on Aiden. Aiden Maynard to wave the green flag. Oh, Schwittick to the inside. Bailey pulls back. Shot to the outside of Schwittick. Landman Brothers. Oh, we got a car going around. Well, some issues there as we see the 5G of Gore Grant has come to a halt and the tire off the back end of that car. So we will get the tow truck back over there, get that 5G up on the hook and he will make his way to the pits, cutting his night a little short. So we talked a little bit about uh, going the distance here, 40 laps, a long way to go. I believe we're, uh, we're, well, I know we're still not to the halfway point here and uh, a few of these cars dropping off pretty quick. Having some issues here running through our Thunderstock feature event. See a bunch of the cars, uh, the whole field almost come to a stop down there in turn number one. Looks like a pretty good line up there, turns one and two, waiting to go green. They, uh, side by side. I'm sure if we can get a long green stretch going here, this thing will uh, stretch out just a little bit as we get a peek on screen here. A Paige Lanou's machine 92, as you mentioned, some front end damage. That car has uh, seen its fair share of bumps and bangs so far this season. I know when I interviewed her just a couple of weeks ago, she was uh, talking about the black streak across the backstretch wall that she put there and uh, quite a hard lick that night just under the All-Canadian banner. And if uh, you're putting those tire marks that high on the wall, you have had some issues. But uh, she came back out the next week uh, strong as ever and, and running smooth here and having a great night in the 92 car. Yeah, she's got a good uh, good group behind her with reed drainage and LM machinery. Um, it's nice to see her out in the rookie season. They, uh, they, I believe they won that car in a raffle. That used to be the 43 car of Cody Vandewinkle. So nice to see her out. Some people win them raffles and sell the car to get the money. But it's nice to see them win that raffle and get out there. And they also pan it over to the to the 36 of Alan Riom there, who's, who's able to restart the 96T of Todd the Law Shaw. Yeah, uh, he's having a good run right now. And he's had a good run the last few nights. I know last week doing battle with uh, Gerald Martin there running second. So he's had a, quite a good season so far this year. Yeah, he really has. He come up and he, he was up there at Merrittville and Humberstone there about a month ago and he ran really well. Um, Shaw, he's running well. Lantman Brothers, it's nice to see them show up here. They, uh, they're they just like 15 minutes from Merrittville Speedway. But they made the long trek down here and they put both cars in one trailer and they come all the way down. So Gord Grant in the 5G on the hook now. That car making its way to the infield, and I assume uh, perhaps the pits, whether we park it on the infield to continue on here. But uh, once we get back underway, looks like uh, Wheel lost clear down there to the brake drum, so 
Unfortunate circumstances there for Gord Grant in the 5G. So just about ready to get back to a caution situation here on the speedway. As I mentioned, just under uh, 20 laps, uh, about almost getting to the halfway point here. So still a long way left to go in our Thunderstock feature event. Yellow flag is back out, so the car should be rolling here, getting them lined back up. This serves correct. It's uh, looked like a good run so far for Jeff Drummond in the 76, that blue and white machine. He started tail on this feature event and he has worked his way up well inside the top 10, halfway through the field anyway. So a, a decent run there for Drummond in that 76 machine. Well, green flag in hand, Maynard ready to cut these guys loose one more time. Bailey still your race leader in the 49. Schwittick and Shaw behind him, not much change. Lampman Brothers behind him in row number two. Todd, Shaw, and Drummond behind them as we continue on. Mayu, Riom, Wilson. Smolders, Lanou, and a few other cars that I can't remember their names right now. Ready to go back to green. And the 98 comes around just a little bit, but he keeps it pointing in the right direction. We'll stay green. Have to keep an eye on the 36 machine of Rio as he's got some sheet metal coming off of that car. So we'll see if that can withhold and not come off to cause any caution as things uh, stretching out just a little bit for Bailey at the point. Not much changing up front to Bailey, Shaw, and Schwittick. One, two, three. Lampman, Shaw, and Lampman behind them. Watson getting a little squirrely there, but he's been able to gather it back up and keep us going. He should be approaching halfway soon. Most of these drivers seem to be pretty clean through one and two, but down in three and four, is where a lot of these guys seem to be having their issues. Kind of strange coming through the bottom there with a little bit of a bump and throwing these cars for a bit of a loop. Shaw inching closer and closer to Bailey. He's not letting them get out of his sights. He says to me, he might have something. Maybe he's holding something. Looks like there's trouble on the 76 there to bottleneck everybody. The 36, Alan Riol missing the door and a flat right rear. So I have to wonder if there's no door on the car where it is on the track at this point in time. We're not having any debris caution, so could have just gotten folded under that car, but Rio now to the infield with some issues on that hot rod as we continue on here. Flagman Aiden Maynard with the two flags in the air, halfway to go. 
20 down, 20 more to go. Still a lot of racing left here today. The top seven have kind of stretched them up single file. Then you got a little bit of a break and you got the next seven. Couple more laps and our leaders will start having to work their way through some of these slower cars. It's pretty weird, but as you, you say, two groups of fields kind of running here. A Schwittick in the 53 pulls it down to the infield. Not sure what's wrong on that a car, but uh, another one making its way to the infield. So some cars down. Now the 75 car slow in four makes his way up to the top of the track. Hopefully he can limp that one around and we will try and stay green here. 75 makes his way to the infield. So we will stay green. Ryan Berry there in the 75. So. Got another car up in the wall in turn three and four. Is he going to be able to handle this? Is he going to make it back? The 427 to Trevor Jones. Creeping around the top of the track going into one and two. Will he make it back to the back? To the back stretch where he can get off. So Bailey now working his way through and I believe I found the door from Rio. It's on the front of the 76 car as we had a look at those cars as they came by on the screen. So crazy stuff. We've got a ton of cars on the infield. Our leaders are now coming up on a bigger group of these slower cars. Some of these slow cars aren't slow cars, but Bailey and Shaw have definitely uh, got it figured out here, catching these guys pretty quick. So Bailey now on the high side past Lanou, another car may you in the 98 down to the infield. So one other one bites the dust. Can't get that song out of my head now. As leaders continue to work their way through traffic and that little, I believe that's the sheet metal, right? Hanging off the front of that 76 car. So as long as it will stay there, we will stay green and continue on as uh, Wilson now looks to the inside of work. work. A feature winner here just a couple weeks ago, now going a lap down to Bailey. And while Shaw and Bailey have kind of ran away from the rest of the field, we got a good battle developing for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Yeah, that is the front door of the, or the side door <laughs> of the 36 car on the front of the 76. Hopefully if it stays there, we'll have no issues. Got to change the arrow just a little bit, I have to assume, but uh, Nevertheless, uh, as you mentioned, now Todd Shaw has worked his way up. He's going to try and he's going to have his work cut out for him. He's going to track down these leaders. He's got just about half a track before he was going to get to the bumper of his dad, Steve Shaw. So after some early cautions, the green flag stretching it out. I hope I don't jinx it, but uh, Bailey and Shaw continue to be the class of the field as Bailey puts a lap down on the 76 car once again. And you have to wonder, is Steve Shaw just holding back just a little bit? He seems to be there, but not really gaining and making any ground on him. At this point, I would have to assume, I think we're down about 10 laps to go. You've got to make the move if you can. Dave so Bailey coming around with nine to go. Still leading Shaw. A ways back, you got third place in 96T of Todd Shaw, fourth to 28D of Donnie Lantman, then fifth to 21S of Spence Smolders. Keep watching in the 76, everybody. He's got a door on his right front fender. That door belongs to the 36 of Alan Rion. Puff of smoke coming out of the 42 of Matt Wilson, too. Hopefully it's just tire smoke and nothing catastrophic in there, and he keeps rolling. So Bailey now putting the Lampman another lap down. He's continuing to pick these guys off with Steve Shaw in tow as we get down inside the closing laps here of our 40 lap Thunderstock feature. Flagman Aiden Maynard with 
Five fingers in the air, letting the leaders know five to go. 35 down, five more to go, still anybody's race. Doing the math here, I see at least seven cars parked on the infield, so whether or not they had issues, tire issues, whatever went on, lots of casualties on the infield here, but Bailey and Shasta pacing the field, stretching things out, no worries there for those two. We'll have to see if Bailey can hold on for these last few laps or if Steve Shaw has anything to get to the point. As the leaders are about, I would say a corner and a half away from catching the third place car of Todd Shaw. So these guys have definitely set the pace quite high here tonight. Donnie Landman with a pass on the 96 T of Todd Shaw, but he crosses right back over. A great battle forming for third, fourth and fifth. Two to go for their, your race leader, the 49 of Dave Bailey. Shaw closes in just a little bit. Was he just holding back, waiting to pounce? Does he have enough to get by Bailey as we get down inside the final laps here? One to go for Dave Bailey in the 49 car. Does Steve Shaw have what it takes to get to his bumper, get by him as we get a slow car? Lantman. Could no this be deja vu of Father's Day all over again on a Sunday afternoon when those two come together? Down goes Shaw to the bottom. He's throwing it all at him. Will they touch? He doesn't have enough. Your winner, the 49 of Dave Bailey. Second, the 96 of Steve Shaw. What a move by Steve Shaw to try and make it work there all the way down to the bottom, throwing everything he had at Bailey there. Coming down to the wire, can't make it stick. Got to give him props for holding off. He definitely could have got into the side of Bailey, held it down low, and that will give the feature win to the 49 car of Dave Bailey. Heck of a run from the 49 car. Always fun to watch a feature come down to the line like that and know that uh, these guys have raced before and these guys will race again. And I'm sure Steve Shaw, as he goes by, him, gives him a thumbs up and says, next time, it's my turn. Yeah, they'll definitely race again. Probably tomorrow night if they go up to Humberstone and race. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to say, but... Uh, Thank you, Dean, for letting me come up here and partake for a little bit. Uh, I gotta go, I gotta drive back to Guelph tonight. I gotta work tomorrow morning at 6.30. So uh, everybody, thank you for uh, letting me uh, talk for a little bit. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll be back again. I I've got his resume. We'll have to look it over, see if he's got any uh, qualifications here for the, yeah. the job. No doubt, thanks again, <laughs> Dean, I appreciate it. Thank you, Jason, for joining me and uh, glad to have a, a, a cohort in the booth here tonight. And. Uh, Safe travels to Jason as he heads back on the highway, keeping our Tim Horton stocked. But again, 40 laps in the books here for our Thunderstock feature. Took a little bit to get going, but once we got her. Well, our mini stocks continue to roll out onto the racetrack as we continue to go through our feature program here tonight.
Well, things have definitely spread out here since the drop of the green flag in our mini mod feature. Well, caution going to come out. We've got some debris on the front stretch, and that's going to bunch this big field of mini mods up just a little bit here. Things spread way out all over the racetrack. A couple uh, had made their way to the infield. Underwood in the 56 it was on the infield. He's made his way back out onto the racetrack as we are uh, still getting a few of the Thunderstocks off of the track that were parked on the infield. So uh, still cleaning up from our last feature as we continue on in our mini mod feature here tonight. So Evan Bonner in the 16 car, currently your race leader here in our mini mod division. Bonner starting on the front row in that 16 machine, leading these guys around. Behind him though, it is his brother in the N64 car. Of Dylan Bonner, Dylan Bonner running in second. Back to third place, we have Marshall Harreggers and then McNally and Bertozzi rounding out the top five. Ballison behind Bertozzi. O'Leary in that 28K. Austin Pickering back out in the 91 to continue on for this feature event here tonight. Mark Fallon had a great run early on in his heat race. He's out there. Burke in the E46 into the 46 car. J.D. Hack there in the 14. See Turkington back out in the 52 after he was uh, penalized a bit earlier on. Had to leave the track for not wearing his neck brace, but got that sorted out and uh, we get ready to go back one more time around before we cut these guys loose. Mini mod feature event as we get ready to go Delaware. Double file restart. That puts Herregers and Bonner right behind Evan Bonner to start this feature one more time. So Evan in the 16 will pace him down through three and four. Pulls to the bottom and cuts him loose one more time. Caution out, caution out again right away on that start. Little bit of debris there on the back stretch. We'll get that picked up real quick as the guys get lined up here. We'll give him one more time around. Evan Bonner pacing the field in that 16 car. Dylan Bonner, Marshall Freggers behind them, second and third.
So green flag in hand one more time. Evan Bonner in the 16 again, going to lead him down the back stretch. As they get ready to come back to green one more time for our Great Lakes Gymnastics mini mod feature. Things picking up as they head down the back stretch. Evan Bonner at the point. Dylan Bonner, Marjo Hareckers. Nate McNally in the eight car up into the mix, trying to get his car to the point. Three wide there through one and two. Hareggers now to the point in that 31 car, looking for a little redemption after some issues last week as Caution comes out once again. Caution comes out as we've got some issues in turn one. A few cars I see around. They have 78 in a boat and over there. Couple cars around there. Johnson in the 29, Turkington in the 25 car. Turkington in the 25, going to need a bit of a push to get that thing fired back up, but I believe both of these guys will be able to join the tail of the field here as we continue on for a mini-mod feature, Johnson and Turkington. Always like the look of that 25 car with the big old Hulk on the side of that there for Turkington. As we get a shot of all the cars down there. fired back up. Not sure if he'll make his way to the pits or if he will just join the tail end of the field. Looking like he's going to make the right hand turn there, make his way to the pits. So Turkington off now into the pits. We'll get these guys lined back up. Marshall Horegger's in the 31 car, your current leader. Had jumped out front just a little bit ahead of Dylan Bonner. Once again, Delaware file will restart, getting these guys lined up, ready to go. Looks like we got things sorted out here. We'll get these cars lined up one more time, get them ready to go. Green flag in hand, Evan Bonner going to bring him back around one more time through three and four as we go back to green in our mini mod feature.
Tampa Rakers back to the point. Dylan Bonner now to the inside of brother Evan. And Tate O'Leary with a great run up there in the 28 car has made his way up inside the top five. Now looking to the inside of Evan Bonner to take away that third position. Sorry, Caleb O'Leary. Caleb O'Leary in the 28 car. So Herrega starts to pull away from the field a little further back to Dylan Bonner in the N64. Caleb O'Leary in the 28 runs third. Pickering and McNally now looking to do battle for that fourth and fifth position. Reggers now stretches it out just a little bit as he goes down through three and four. Coming up on a few more of the slower cars. Bowden about to go a lap down in the 78 car. As he continues to work through his season, getting things sorted out. A little further ahead to Harley Hornick in the 62. Glad to see she got her technical issues sorted out and back on the track in the... Crazy color scheme, 62, as Reggers works on past her. A little further back to Dylan Bonner and Caleb O'Leary still running strong in that third position. Things heating up a little further back there. O'Leary a little bit in contact with the 78. That opens up the door for Pickering McNally as we've got the caution flag out on the racetrack one more time. So that's going to bunch this field up once again, allow Bonner to the rear bumper of Herregers as he was stretching things out quite a bit there in the 31 car. So that tightens up the field just a little bit here in our mini mod division. Herregers, Bonner, and Caleb O'Leary with a heck of a run, as we mentioned, sitting in that third position in the 28 car. So a couple guys having some pretty stellar runs here tonight. O'Leary being one of those. Behind him, Pickering and McNally. Bertozzi trying to sneak his way up into the top five. Looks like drivers will get the white flag this time by. One more time around the speedway before we cut them loose again.
So one more feature to go following our mini mod feature as we get ready to go. One more time around, Harega is your race leader, bringing them back to green, down through three and four. So Herregers once again stretches it out. O'Leary now up into that second position. A little bit of contact between O'Leary and Bonner, which opens the door for McNally. McNally now jumps to that second position. Pickering with some sheet metal damage on the side of that 91 car. He works his way up inside the fourth position. Bertozzi now squeaks into the top five as he gets by O'Leary. Reggers putting uh, Jessica Van Hall down a lap as uh, Bonner now looks to the outside of McNally trying to make that move for the second position. Door to door they go through one and two. McNally has to slow just a little bit as they come up on the slower car of Van Hall as we work down to two laps to go here in our mini mod feature. Reggers with that contact last week between him and Bonner looking for some redemption and proving he is fast as we just about to go white flag we get the caution out as we've got a car around down there in turn number one so caution coming out just as we were about to get to the white flag lap So O'Leary, after having a great run, seems to have fallen off the pace just a little bit. Sees himself working his way back through the field. Out front, though, Herregers with his redemption here tonight at the point in the 31, followed by Bonner. Marshall Bonner and McNally. McNally, a good run. Pickering there coming off a feature win just a week ago. And uh, Bertozzi inside the top five. All names we've heard pretty consistently here so far this season in our mini mod division. Ballison peels off the field to the infield in the 21, so. That will cut his night short. So should be down to green, white checkers. Here for the closing laps of our mini mod feature, Herregers and Bonner, one, two. McNally and Pickering, three and four.
bunched up, single file, ready to go. Herregers brings him back to green. One more time around the speedway. Down the back stretch they go this time by coming to the checker flag. Marshall Herregers in the 31 looking for redemption. We'll get it. Tonight's mini mod feature, the 31 car of Marshall Herregers, followed by Dylan Bonner in the N64. McNally, Pickering, and Bertozzi round out the top five here, and that's going to do it for our mini mod feature here tonight. Not a bad way to end things for Herregers after the uh, incident last weekend. So one more feature to go here tonight. Uh, good run by the Dutchman Motorsports 31. Last week the 31 car actually had a broken brake pedal. That car broke, or the pedal had it completely broken off in the car after the contact with the wall. So glad to see both Marshall and the car back together in one piece. Picking up tonight's feature win. Marshall makes his way into the pits and our mini stock feature to end and close out tonight's events, make their way out onto the racetrack. Fifteen laps the distance to close out the night here with our mini stock feature. Drivers getting ready to go here. We have the 77 of Jake Blake, the 92 of Ryan Houston, 2M of Mark McDonald, the J2 is James Kelly, the 50 of Ken Frazier. 747 of Ryan Beaulieu, the 26 of Matt Newell, and the 54 car of Chris French ready to go for our mini stock feature. So green flag in hand, 15 laps to go before we close out tonight's event. French and Newell on the front row, bringing them out of corner number four as we get underway. Green flag in the air. Well, Newell in the 26, quick to the point. He has been quick all season long in that yellow 26. French and Frazier behind him. As I mentioned earlier on, glad to see the 747 back out here tonight after that contact last week. Starting to stretch his lead out quite a bit over French in that 54 car. Frazier, Bouillou, and the 2M of Mark McDonald. Good battle shaping up for third there between French and Bouillou. Both of those guys now to the inside of Frazier, so they'll take away the second and third spot. McDonald in tow behind. Frazier falling back to that fourth, fifth position, I should say. He must have a tire down as he slides up to the wall once again there in that 50 car. Well, left front, or sorry, right front flat on that car. That's going to cut his feature a bit short.
Well, Newell with a full corner over second place French. Cars definitely starting to stretch out just a little bit, putting space in between each and every car so far. Big gap from first to second. A few more cars back to third and then to fourth. So things uh, stretching out but rolling along smooth here as we get ready to go halfway here for our 15 lap mini stock feature. Halfway that time by for race leader Newell. Things winding down just a little bit here. We'll have to see if Newell can get to the back of the 92. Five laps remaining for race leader Matt Newell in the 26. A long way back here to the 54 of French. now to the back of Houston in the 92H. We'll take that spot away. Will you falling off just a little bit there in the 747. Long way back to French there in second. Donald with his hands full in that two car, getting a little squirrely coming out of turn number four. And all kinds of spitting and sputtering there from Bull U in the 747 as he came by the tower there. French in the 54, he was running second. He is now into the infield as well. So some of these cars having some issues here. As we have just two laps left to go here tonight. White flag out now for race leader Matt Newell as the 747 makes his way to the infield. So if I'm not mistaken, that puts McDonald in second and James Kelly in third. As Newell about to come down across the stripes, take the checker flags to finish off tonight. James, we have her finished. She is done. Matthew Newell comes home with tonight's mini stock feature event, and that is going to do it for the racing action here tonight. Well, race fans, I want to thank you all for coming out tonight and joining us here at Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. We hope to see you back here each and every Saturday night. 7 o'clock green flag here from the Speedway. Be sure to check out the broadcast on Monday night. Monday night at 7 o'clock. You can catch the broadcast live view here from tonight's racing action. Check us out on our Facebook page. Check out the website for upcoming events. Uh, again, thank you for coming out, and we will see you next Saturday night.